It says we are live. We are live on okay. YouTube. All right. The meeting will now come to order. Welcome to the October 20th, 2020 meeting of the Durham County Board of Equalization and Review. My name is David I Smith. The and I'm is very low. What's that? I'm the chair of the board. I'm going to try again. I would like to start by acknowledging that we are conducting this meeting using a remote electronic platform as permitted by session law. 2020-3. The Board of Equalization and Review is a quasi-judicial body that is governed by the North Carolina General Statutes. The Board conducts evidentiary hearings on appeals from appraised real and personal property tax evaluation. Today's meeting will proceed to of the Board of Equalization and Review. On the screen, you will see the members of the Board of Equalization and Review. Additionally, tax staff and representatives from the county's attorney's offices may be present in the remote meeting. Appellants and their witnesses, if any, are required to register in advance and are also attending the remote meeting. When a case is called for its hearing, speakers will be prompted within the remote platform so their videos can be seen. The chair will swear in applicants and witnesses at the beginning of each case. Staff will present each case and applicants will then provide their evidence. Control of the presentation and screen sharing will remain with the tax staff. Today's meeting is being broadcast live on the county's YouTube site, and a link to this broadcast is on the website for the Board of Equalization and Review. Before we begin the evidentiary hearings on today's agenda, I would like to provide some information, some important information about the steps taken to ensure that each party's due process rights are as we proceed in this remote platform. Each applicant on today's agenda was notified that this meeting would be conducted using a remote electronic platform. During registration, each applicant on today's agenda consented to the board conducting the evidentiary hearing on the remote platform. We will also confirm today at the start of each evidentiary hearing that the participants in the evidentiary hearing consent to the matter proceeding in this remote platform. If there is any objection to a matter proceeding in this remote platform, the case will be continued. Notice of today's meeting provided by publishing notice in the newspaper and by mail to the applicant. The newspaper notices for today's meeting contained information on how the public can access the remote meeting as the meeting occurs. These notices also contain information about the registration requirement for the meeting, along with information about how to register. All individuals participating in today's evidentiary hearings we're also required to submit a copy of any presentation, document, exhibit, or other material that they wish to submit at the evidentiary hearing prior to today's meeting. No new documents will be submitted during today's meeting. All decisions of this board are subject to appeal to the North Carolina Property Tax Commission. Uh, and with that out of the way, let's dig into our agenda. The first thing we have on the agenda is the consent agenda which are items one through uh, 214. Are there any comments from the board? Then I'll entertain a motion regarding items one through 214. I move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Have a second. All those second. in favor say aye. 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 All right, let's let's move on to the items uh, 215 through 217. Amanda, are you present? Yes, I am present. All right, let me get you sworn in, please. If you're ready to write in. Okay. Swear or affirm that the testimony you're about yeah. to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. State your name and position with the county, please. Amanda Markle, and I am division manager over individual personal property and land records. And 
these items actually do need to be heard individually. Okay. Um, they are not all the same issue. And I'm not sure if we have taxpayers that are um, present for these or not. Okay. Yes. I, I don't, I, the only names I have, well, the first one is Southside Revitalization. Is there someone here for that item? Okay. All right, then, Amanda, let's proceed with that one. Okay. So this is a discovery of real property value for tax year 2017. Uh, the taxpayer contacted us to find out why they did not receive a tax bill for 2017. And it was determined that there were some codes on there for whatever reason that did not generate a bill for 2017, but they should have. So the tax office issued a discovery for 2017 um, and they are appealing the 30% late list penalty that is to be applied to that 2017 tax bill. Um, and from, and from, this, from the tax office standpoint, um, the taxpayer was the one who notified of this. So we are not opposed um, if the board were to compromise or release any portion of the penalty. So who, whose mistake was it that the codes were on there that they didn't receive the- It was the tax office. Tax office, okay. Yes. All right. Um, all right, board, well, what, what's your pleasure? It sounds like the mistake was not the taxpayers and they came forward to show the error. I make a motion we waive the penalty. Do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. I see Charles and Michelle Davidson. Are they either of them present? Okay, all right, Amanda, well, let's move on with that one then, please. Okay, this is also a discovery um, of a, for a late list for a boat from 20, tax year 2019. Um, the tax office discovered um, through a review of a wildlife listing that the taxpayer had not listed their boat with Durham County in tax year 2019. So we sent them a verification letter verifying that it was in fact located in Durham County. We received that back and then we issued a discovery tax bill with a 10% late list penalty um, on that notice. And the taxpayer yeah. is appealing the late list penalty on that notice. Have they given any reason for why they didn't list? No, it was not on there. Okay. All right, well, it doesn't seem, seem like they have a valid, valid reason for this. Then I'll entertain a motion. This is number 216. Or unless there's any discussion from the board. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion. So move. Um, go ahead. So move that we accept county's recommendation for the 10% late list penalty. This is Wendell Bullard. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next one. This is the Independent Animal Rescue. Is anybody here from that organization? All right, then Amanda, let's proceed with that one. Okay, this is an um, exemption denial from tax year 2019. The taxpayer submitted an exemption application in December of 2019, um, and they were denied because they did not own the property on January 1 of 2019 and the property was not in use as of January 1 of 2019 um, for the exempt purposes. And also because they were submitting a late application. So they were denied for three reasons um, and they are appealing those. Um, they supplied documentation showing that they purchased the property um, January 31st of 2019. And also an explanation stating that once they purchased the property, they then leased it back to the prior owner um, until April, I'm sorry, I forgot the exact date, um, April 30th of 2019. So they didn't start using it until after um, April 30th of 2019. And so the tax office, of course, asks that you uphold the denial for tax year 2019 because once again, they did not own it January 1 of 2019 and they were not using it 20, January 1 of 2019. Did they qualify for the exemption in uh, 2020? They have not submitted an application for 2020, but yes, they potentially could qualify for 2020. Okay. Well, it sounds like they don't qualify on three different grounds for 2019 then. Okay. Any discussion from the board? Then I will entertain a motion regarding this is number 217. 
I'll I'll make a motion we uphold. Decision. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Thank you, Amanda. I guess we're done with you. Okay. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Let's see. Jamin, are you there? Is he going to be handling these others, these untimely determinations? Starling, are you are you on there? What, what's going on with uh, with Jamin? Yep, he was supposed to be here this morning. Uh, he told me yesterday he was handling these. So uh, maybe uh, it's that scheduled at ten forty. So yeah, maybe it's, he's not yeah. coming on at ten forty. Uh, okay, hold up. Uh, uh, can the board take a break right quick and let me let him know we're ready for him? Okay, that, that'd be fine. Okay, all right. Take a coffee break. All right. Uh, he'll, he'll be here in a few seconds. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he's going to join in now. Uh, he said he looked at the schedule. He was 1040. <laughs> he was going to wait until 1040 to join. Well, you may want to tell some of these people sometimes they're a little faster than normal. Well, especially coming out of the uh, the uh, consent agendas and whatnot, that's pretty quickly. Right, right. Yeah, the, the time on here probably should have been a little closer. Yeah. So he'll be here very shortly. He's joining right now. Okay. Good morning. There he is. Hello, Jamin. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are y'all this morning? All right. Let's get you sworn in, please. If you will raise your right hand. Do you swear yes, or that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do, sir. State your name and position, please. Uh, Jamin Gaddy, uh, the real or the uh, residential real property appraiser supervisor. All right, and we have several cases here. I guess the first one is the William Jeffries uh, properties. Is uh, Mr. Uh, Jeffries here? Correct. Mm -hmm. it, I, I think he's not here because I'm not seeing him or hearing from him. He's here. I gotta gotta get him to unmute his phone. Uh, uh, okay. All right. This thing right here. Bill's phone. Right here. Have to unmute. Let me call him. Hold on, we're gonna to try to call him on his phone so we let him know. The Am I unmuted now? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, is that is that Bill? Yes. Okay. William M. Jeffries for the William M. and Joanne Jeffries Living Trust. Okay. All right. Well, let, let's go back to Jamin uh, for a minute here. So, uh, if you'll, uh, there are four cases here. If you'll please let us know what the what the issue is. Um, these cases were actually all, all the line items from 218 to 225. Um, you know, Durham's County's take on these particular appeals is uh, that we are asking those to be looked at as untimely because all of these appeals were actually received well after uh, the extended um, date of 6-30-2020. So uh, it is... Uh, we are just asking for these to be considered untimely. Well, specifically, uh, Mr. Jeffries, uh, when were they supposed to be filed and when were they filed? Uh, so, well, we were supposed, all appeals were supposed to be received by five o'clock on June 30th, 2020. 
these particular appeals, these four were received on 8-11. So a month months. and a half later. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, uh, Mr. Jeffries, first of all, I need to get you sworn in, please. If you will raise right your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do so affirm. And are you comfortable using this format, this Zoom format? I am, if I'm not too ugly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so I understand you filed two and a half months late. Uh, why was that? What's, what's your reasoning, and, and why should we grant you an appeal? Okay, very briefly, uh, say that three years ago, my whole life changed when my older sister, who already, always took everything, care of everything for the family, uh, came down with dementia. and. Uh, I had to visit her in the hospital and do everything with her property and all like that. And when my birthday came, I was approaching in, in July, I, I came to and realized I was right up to the wire or past it. But I tried to explain why I was slow and, and tried to come up to date. And uh, so I'd be glad to, to Furnish any information. I, I have four folders here, one for each of our four rental properties. My wife and I have four duplexes that we rent. It's more than half of our income, along with Social Security and a, a pension. All right. So you were you were notified, and you just because your sister usually handled it, you were. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I was. Um, I, I've had to put everything aside for the last three years as our power of attorney, learning what a power of attorney was and how you do it, and all like that. And um, so I was just getting comfortable with things I'd been working on for her in her uh, Frederick County, Maryland properties. And looking for my, at my own affairs, and, and I saw that the governor's extension of it uh, uh, gave some more time. It was going to be over at the end of that month. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's, let's hear from the board. Well, what's the pleasure of the board? You know, we are really have to be careful about granting uh, these extensions because we don't want the whole county to be able to do it. Only under extreme circumstances should we grant uh, extensions for, for people that are untimely. So what, what are your the thoughts of the rest of the board? Well, I can only speak for myself, but having gone through um, a situation where a family member had a similar uh, issue, I, I can vouch for how that can be incredibly <laughs> disorienting and uh, all consuming. So I would lean on the side of, of more grace, I think. Um, but that's just my my opinion. Okay. Mr. Chair Wendell, having just dealt with that myself with this year, I can understand exactly. I'm thinking about that as um, the property owner, as a POA, doing double duties, how that time period can get past you. But I do also respect the deadline not to be opposed. So I'll be more likely to um, vote for leniency on a case by case basis, specifically given the circumstances. All right. Jeanette, David, what do you all think? Well, I, I sympathize with his situation, certainly, but you know, as he stated, he's been dealing with it for three years. And so, I, you know, it's just, it's a, that's a hard call. Uh, can go with the majority, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I could go either way. I mean, I, I haven't had any experience with that. I know Wendell and Tony say they have, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll entertain a motion. And this is items 218 through items 221. I would move that we accept them as timely. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. All right, sir. We have we have granted your your request, and you will be we will be hearing your appeals. Thank you very much. When will the appeal be heard? Uh, I'm not sure. 
Starling, do you know that, or is there? You'll be notified by mail, I would imagine. Yes, he has not been scheduled for that, and we will put him on the schedule as soon as uh, the open dates come up. So he will be notified by mail, and so it cannot be uh, during the month of October because we will not have enough time to notify him. So we'll be in the month of uh, November. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank the board. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Is this Thalcor Enterprises? I believe that's how it said. Is anybody here from Thalcor Enterprises? Is anybody? I, I guess. If, if somebody shows up in the waiting room, how would we know if they're with this uh, this group or not? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move ahead. They show up. I have accepted everybody that's shown up, and like Mr. Jeffrey spoke up when it was his turn. I'm thinking they'll do the same thing. I'm new at this, so. Bear with me. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I just want to make sure they weren't in the waiting room. You know, somebody with yeah, everybody that's in the waiting room has, you know, I it's all staff basically. Okay. So you played it. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, Mr. Jeffers, he's the only one. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, Jamin. Well, let's hear about about back poor enterprises. Uh, this one uh again is just uh, we received, you know, the cutoff date was June 30th. This one was not received until actually 9 30, uh, 2020. So this one was all but three months late. So we are asking for it to be considered untimely. Have you heard anything from them or any reasons why they said it was late? No, sir. Okay. All right. Then I'll entertain a motion. This is number 222. I'll make a motion we accept it as untimely. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next one. Kenneth Edmonds. Is Kenneth Edmonds uh, available? All right. So it's, I guess it's the same thing again, Jamin. How late was he? Uh, yes, sir. This one was also uh, not um, received until 930. And you haven't okay. heard anything from him today. Other than his appeal. Right. Yeah, okay. but that was it. Then I will entertain a motion regarding this one. It's number 223, Kenneth Edmonds. I move that we accept as untimely. Do I have a second? A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, the next one is United Publishers. Is anybody here for United Publishers? Okay, seeing none. All right, Jamin, how late was this one? Uh, three months. This one was received also on 930. All right. Then I'll entertain the motion regarding 224. Move to accept staff's recommendation is untimely. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The next one is Brad Conant. Who seconded that? I'm sorry. David. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is Brad Conant available? Is he present? All right, Jamin, what about this one? How late were they? This one was received 10-2. Uh, okay. All right, then I'll entertain a motion on number 225. Excuse me, may I uh, uh, relay a message here? Uh, okay. uh, Jamin, what was that uh, parcel number that you are uh, uh, called out? What, what's the parcel number to him? Uh, the one that we just did, or no, right now, when we're on right now, the parcel number is one six four seven five two. Okay, thank you. The reason why I was uh, someone was trying to get in and could not get in, and I did not get their name, but I got the parcel ID number, and I wanted to make sure it wasn't him because he's trying to get in right now. He called. Yeah, which parcel number was that, Starling? One four three one two five. Okay, well, yeah, they, they're not due till two thirty anyway, right? That's not any of the untimely. Yeah. Oh, okay. That okay. That oh, that no. That's something else. Okay. But yeah, yeah, she didn't give. Oh, wait a minute. She didn't give me that number. Oh, that's what it was. But someone yeah. was trying to call and get in there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. All right. Then I'll entertain a motion regarding number two twenty-five. I move we accept the county's position as untimely. Do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you, Jamin. Thank you, sir. 
All y'all have a great day. You too, sir. You as well. You as well. All right. Do we have anybody here for the 11 a.m. hearings? Uh, if not, I guess we'll need, do we have anybody here for any of the hearings? I'm not showing anybody but staff. All right, well then I guess we'll need to take a break till 11 o'clock when our first official hearing is. Yes, uh, uh, so hold on one moment. Who was at 1040? What was the uh, one at 1040? The only 1040s were the uh, untimely determinations. Oh, so he must have been one of the untimely ones. The one that uh, wasn't here uh, on the first one, we didn't have one for the untimely or the first one. Uh, no, number, the one that was before 225. 224? 224. That was uh, United Publishers. That, and no one was here for them, was it? Yeah. No. That might be who it was because he said he had a uh, 1040 appointment. Well, here's a Mr. Christian Edwards. I see him on there. Just coming in? Yes. Can you unmute him, so he, uh, Ms. McCoy, so we can see if he's the one? Yeah, that will be he. he he's in. Okay, I just asked him to unmute, but he's still muted. <laughs> oh, there we are. Okay. Uh, Mr. Edwards. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good morning. Uh, we, we need to get you sworn in, please. If sure. You raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, sir. Are you comfortable with using this uh, Zoom format? I am. All right. And are you here with United Publishers? Is that correct? I, yes. My father died. Um, he owned a business called the Carolina Times in Durham off of... Uh, Old Fayetteville Road or Old Fayetteville Street 923. And he died uh, May 2nd of this year, unfortunately. And his office, as well as his home, um, I guess was appraised, uh, I guess within sometime this year or earlier this year. And wanted to see if there is any way possible to get those reappraised again. Um, well, well all we're doing here, sir, is apparently it was filed, the appeal was filed untimely, too late. So we're determining whether or not we're going to hear it because it was filed too late. So what we want okay. to hear from you is why was it filed late? And I think you've heard. Um, well, my father died um, May 2nd, and I'm, I'm taking on his business affairs um, as well as his personal affairs. And um, I'm going through tons of mail just to try to get current, unfortunately. Um, it's no different than anybody else. It's just it's a lot um, that I'm taking on at this point in time. And. Uh, the commercial building um, is, is a little bit more than I expected. So I just wanted to see if there's any way possible to get a reappraisal of his two properties. If it's outside of the current limit, then it, it's totally understandable. Um, I just wanted to, to see if there's any way possible to to have that reappraised. Um, and so, if you know, that's essentially why I'm here this morning. All right, well then um, I'll, I'll open it up to the board. Uh, we've already made a determination on this, but we can reopen it and, and re-vote. So what's the pleasure of the board? I think in light of the, the information, I would be willing to to reverse our decision. I, I also, I would also. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in agreement with that. All right, well, what I think we need to do is probably have new mo two motions. First motion would be to reopen the case then to make a decision. So I'll entertain a motion to reopen this case. So move. So move. Oh, do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well, I think we need any further discussion. So let's have a motion on whether or not to accept his application as timely. Yeah, I'll move that we do accept the application as timely. Okay, do I have a second? Second, second. Wendell. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Yeah. Aye. aye. Okay, so Mr. Edwards, we're, what, what we've done is we have now allowed it to be heard because it was too late to be heard otherwise. So it's you'll good. be getting a notification about appealing your value because we're this we're not dealing with the value right now, just whether or not we're going to hear your case. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So All thank right. you for coming, sir. Board members, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. All right.
Bye bye. Bye. Okay, so we still have we had anybody come in? Ms. McCoy? Eva? Anita? Did anybody else come in? Uh no, just staff. Okay. All right. Well, we'll take a break then till 11 o'clock. It's 27 minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'll be back.
हेलो यस What's your uh, address or your parcel number? Uh, parcel number is uh, address is three six one eight Page Road. Three six one eight Page Road. Yeah. Okay. Parcel okay. ID one five seven six eight five. Okay. All right. When they get ready for you, they'll call you in. I'm getting ready. To, uh, could you put your uh, put it yourself on mute? Yes, I will. All right. हेलो हेलो कैन आई हैव योर पर्सनल नंबर और योर एड्रेस आह यस इट्स एट थ्री एट ग्लेनको रोड इन डरम ओके होल्ड ऑन हम्म आई एम गोइंग मेबी कुड यू पुट बैक ऑन मी प्लीज I can try. <laughs> How do you put it on mute?
what time it will start? Still waiting. I think 11 o'clock is when we ought to come back. So it's what, only 10.52 now? Starling, did you get my email? Uh, email, let's see. Didn't highlight. So let's go there. For some reason, it didn't highlight. Let's see. Here we are. It's the actual email. Yeah. Uh, two untimely have shown up. Oh, yeah, I'm sitting here paying attention. Oh, so that's who they were, untimely? Yes. Uh, it's number, I can tell Mr. Uh, Smith also. I guess he can hear me. Uh, Mr. Smith? Yes. We have two untimely to show up, uh, number 22 and number 25. I guess I guess I was moving too fast. <laughs> well, well, he will rehear them. But you have to bring Jamin back in. I don't see number 25 still on here. Oh yeah, he's on there. We're trying to, I think, uh, let me check, let me check. We're trying to get up with him, okay? Okay. Well, Jamin, I'll hit him up right quick. Okay. The two people just showed up that was in the and uh mr williams mr smith said they're going to hear them uh as to uh so it was two of the untimelies showed up i guess yeah one of them uh, i caught the tail end of one of them i forget uh edmunds or edmund something like that okay yeah that was united publishers the, um Oh, that was that was that was United Publishers. So we got him, but the publishers, we got him. We got number two twenty two and new, number two twenty five. You know, the last four were originally untimely, and it sounds like they uh, overturned that ruling. Yes, uh, okay. when he came in and gave his, uh, when he told what had happened about his father and whatnot, because it wasn't him; it was his father. Something his father died, so he right. just. And he had called to get the uh, the the password and the login information. He was trying to get in the whole time, but he just couldn't. And so finally, I got him the information. That's when he got in. So Mr. Smith said two others just came in, and, and we'll hear go ahead and hear them, and they'll they'll rehear them. I, I guess so. They wanted you okay. to be here. Uh, so they're gonna do it today or next time? No, now. Okay, all right. I'll get right back in then. Yeah, okay then. All right. Well, all right, not, not right this minute. I think we're going to come back at 11 o'clock, but come on in. Okay, all right. All right. See you in a bit. All right.
have two more people that joined. I have to check and see who they are. Hi, right, could you give me your name and your personal? I mean, your personal your address. Uh, yes, Aaron Bergstrom, two o seven East Delafield. Okay, I got you. Thanks. Hi, right, could I have your address and your name? My name is Sander Pomper, 1003 Havenwood Lane. Okay. Did you see it? You did you still Hi, uh, do I speak first? Uh, well, we'll come to you in, in just a minute. So. Okay, okay. We're just waiting on one board member to come back. And there she is. Okay, uh, well, let, let's get going again with the hearing. I apologize, I was moving along and a lot of these uh, untimelies that were scheduled for 1040, we heard. So I, we need to go back and give these people a chance. Uh, so let's start with the first one, 222. That poor Enterprises, is somebody here for that? Yeah, I am here uh, from Takur Enterprises. Uh, my name is Anil Singh, and this is regarding 3618 Page Road. All right, I uh, understand that you uh, were untimely with your filing. Uh, why, why were you untimely? What's, what's the so reason? We, uh, we bought this uh, piece of vacant land uh, right before Christmas, and this is the first time we got the bill. So. As soon as we got the will, we reached back uh, to the to the town. So you bought the property in December and you didn't receive any notice? Is that what we, you're saying? Yes, this is the first notice we received. I think it was sometime in July or August. And then we reached out to, because we realized that the value is, you know, way too much uh, from our purchase price. And we also compared with the appraisal we did and then a couple of other properties uh, which were on the same size. Um, well, we, at this point, we're just deciding whether or not we're gonna hear your case because uh, okay. we, we will hear though, you know, if we decide to open it up, then we will hear your, your reasoning. But you, you say you were not notified and okay. That, that's yeah, the, this is, yeah, this is the first notice we received. When did you receive that notice? Uh, it shows me a date of 9-16, 2020. 16, 20, 20. Okay. All right, Jamin, do you have any any insight into this? 
Uh, if he um, received the property in December, would that could that possibly have caused a delay in him getting notified? Well, usually anytime there's a deed transfer, you know, we always mail out what's called a sales verification letter. That is the notice uh, that the, the new owner receives. You know, it's a request to, I mean, it does show the value that we have on record and it is a request uh, for any pertinent information uh, that they want to share with us. So uh, a sales verification letter should have went out. Um, you know, once it gets into the mail system, it's kind of out of, out of our hands. So whether or not he received it, um, you know, I couldn't really say. Okay. Um, but, you know, something is always mailed out anytime there's a deed transfer. So, Mr. Singh, are you saying you didn't receive any notification about anything with this property? Well, the oh, notification. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please go ahead. No, I, just, I thought he was talking with me. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So uh, I checked uh, all the, you know, the folder where we keep all the documents for this property. Uh, after the closing, we did. Uh, this is the first uh, document we received from the um, related to, you know, this property. Okay. All right. Uh, well, what's, what's the pleasure of the board with this case? You know, the county did what they were supposed to do. Uh, but it sounds like there may have been a mistake with the mail. Yeah. Due to the time frame he purchased, I'm comfortable with letting it be to reverse our decision. Okay. What do the rest of you all think? Okay. All right. Then I will open up. I guess we'll need to do again. We'll need to reopen the, the hearing for this one and then come up with a decision. So somebody will please make a motion to reopen the hearing. I make a motion to reopen the hearing for safer enterprises. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Wendell. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. All right. Then I'll entertain a motion regarding whether or not to. Uh, Except this is timely, this application. I make a motion. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All, all opposed? Okay. All right, sir, we've decided to grant you this as timely. So you will you'll be coming before us to have a hearing, all right? Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, moving along, let's see. Is Kenneth Edmonds here? Okay, well, we can skip over that one. We've already had United Publishers. What about Brad Conant? Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay, um, I'll, I'll need to get you sworn in, please, if you'll raise your right hand. Where or from the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do so swear. Okay. Yes. And are you comfortable with using this Zoom format for your hearing? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, understand you filed late. Uh, you missed the deadline. What What was your reasoning and why should we grant a, a, this is timely? Uh, we actually don't believe that we filed late and, and think that uh, we were victims of the COVID mass with the mails and all of that kind of stuff. Um, we received in the February, March timeframe, we received a letter uh, indicating that we uh, that we would be able to uh, to file, and uh, two days afterwards, we sent it by mail um, in an envelope, and uh, then we waited to hear back. Uh, hadn't heard anything back um, on our appeal until all of a sudden we received um, a a bill, and we we're like, okay, maybe. They rejected it. We weren't sure what happened. So we called and were told that uh, it, they didn't receive it. Um, and then someone went and found the mail uh, and found that they did actually receive it. Um, and that's where we're at. Okay. All right. Jamin, do you have any? He was sworn previously. That's why I'm not swearing him in. Jamin, do you, do you know anything about this? Somebody finding it later? Uh, no, sir. That's the first time that I've heard that one. Do you know who who found it, Mr. I do not. Um, 
I don't know. The the person at when we spoke to the tax person um, on the phone number, he asked us to send us a second copy. Um, and that's kind of because at first they didn't see it. And then he says, well, somebody must have found it. So they weren't very clear on what was going on. And this is where we're standing now. OK. All right. Any discussion from the board regarding this one? Uh, it sounds like, again, we've had a mail problem. Yeah. So I mean, according, Jamin had told us they had received it October the 2nd. So is that the found one or did it, was it resent by the homeowner? That, that October one was the email that we sent. And um, again, when we had called after we received the bill, they asked me to send all copies of everything again through email. So that's that email that you have in October. Okay. All right, well, what's the pleasure of the board? I make a motion we rescind our order. <laughs> okay. Do I have a second? Second, okay. Wendell. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and let, let's have a motion too to, to open up the public hearing. Let's, let's back up a little bit. Jeanette, if you'll give a motion to open up the public hearing. Uh, make a motion we reopen the public hearing for uh, Brad Conant. Do I have a second? Second, second. window. I did that backwards, so let's have another <laughs> to make sure it's legal. Then, Jeanette, if you'll restate your motion about granting I make a motion that we make, uh, they deem it as timely. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> aye. aye. All opposed? Okay. All right, thank you, sir. You, thank you very much. Thank you. Your appeal. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All, All right. right. So that's it for the untimelies, correct? There's nobody else here for the untimelies, correct? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's move on into the uh, appeals of property. The first one we have is Mr. Boror. Is that how we say your name, sir? Uh, yeah, I just say Boror. Boror. Okay. All right, sir. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have the, the county has valued your property at 305,000. You think it's worth 297,000. What we need to know sure. from is, is why you think that, that that's what the value should be and how you got there. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta swear you in first, sir. Raise okay. your hand. You swear or affirm a testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God. Yes, I do. State your name, please. Randall or And you are comfortable using this zoom format yes i am and you own this property on cedar grove drive correct Eight, 1809 cedar grove drive yes okay. all right sir so uh you know it's not really a big difference but tell us why you think the value is too high yeah so i when, when i looked at the website and there was a lot of data on it i picked um what i felt were the most comparable properties and I came up with uh, three White Dove Road, 2820 Sagebrush Lane, and 2221 Cedar Grove Drive. And I looked at the uh, improved fair market value lines for those three properties and the assessed value lines and um, took the average of those three for those three properties. Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, I came up with values on the improved value fair market for those three, what I feel are the most comparable properties in terms of square footage and the type of house it is and so forth. Um, $7,697, those three averaged $7,697 lower on the improved value, improved fair market value. And on the assessed value, they averaged $7,487 lower than what my property was assessed at. And so, uh, that's how I arrived at a figure of what I felt was if I'm using those three as the basis and they were the most comparable, yep, you're showing it now, um, they were the most comparable, um, then I come up using that using those figures, I come up with $297,981. And yes, that is not that is not that big of a difference, but it's about seven and a half thousand dollars different from lower than what my assessed value was. Okay. All right, well, and let's hear from the, the county regarding this property. Howard, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me, please? Yes, if you'll raise your right hand. 
Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. And state your name and yeah. name, please. My name is Albert Amante. I'm a residential appraisal with Durham County Tax Office. Okay. And this is in regards to parcel 199903. Uh, the initial value we had for this parcel was 305, 523,000. The taxpayer's opinion of value was 297,981. After extensive review, uh, I recommend a no change to this. Uh, taxpayers' reason for appeal was using 2018, sorry, 2017, 2018 sales price. Uh, he determined that the value should be 7,000 less. I therefore checked out our listing, which was right, and I looked into sales uh, of similar comps. Um, we normally use 2018 and 20 unilateral you know, 19 sales because it's a 2020 um, appraisal. So, you know, like the most recent sales I had were, um, um, the most recent sales I had um, supported our value. Uh, when we look at parcel 199917, it was sold in 2019 for 310,000 and has about 130 square foot less than the subject. Um, yeah. And then um, parcel um, 199906 also sold for 302,000, which is, uh, which has a lesser square foot. Uh, looking at these evidence of sales displays uh, in the exact neighborhood, may me recommend uh, our value is pretty much in line with sales going on and I recommend the board to uphold our value. So these sales that we're looking at right now, are those from the uh, property owner, the ones that are on the screen? Uh, it should be somewhere in the bottom I've loaded. So if Sheila can pull them up. Um, so these are these yours or his that we're looking at now? So parcel. Those are ours. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, parcel, um, uh, you know, like seven one. And parcel, you know, parcel 199917 and parcel, and we have two parcels and parcel 199906. Uh, 199906 um, is a, you know, like it's the same year it was built in 2005. It has almost the same acreage, you know, and we had a graded, you know, um, C plus average and that, you know, uh, and that property sold for 302,000. Uh, so, but these ones we're looking at here, 1806 Cedar Grove Drive. Right. Are, are those from you or are those from the property? These are for me, but you know, we are not using 2017 sales. We're using pretty much 18 and 19 because it's a 2020. Well, these are two 2017 sales I'm looking at. That's why I was wondering yeah. if they were from you or from the other. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, because he had a 2017 sales, and that was the reason why he was using to, you know, like appeal, you know, I did, you know, uh, you know, pull some over there just to compare. But if we scroll up, there should be, uh, there should be some more down. So we have 199172, and pretty much all these sales we have, um, you know, do, you know, that reflect our value, you know, is in line with sales that's going on in the neighborhood. Well, where, where are the sales that the property owner used? So I use 19917. Um, and then I use 1999. Just a minute, Albert. So these are the sales that he used right here. Is, this, is that correct. correct? No, that's right. not correct. That's, that's not correct. So the ones I submitted, I... I quoted to you earlier the addresses, but I realize now I should have quoted to you the, I guess that's a parcel number. Um, the three I used were 199900, 199879, and 195397. Um, those, you know, I looked, there were a whole lot more than that. And what I did was I selected the, pro the homes that were most similar in terms of square footage and style. Well, these are the three that we're looking at now. They've, they've been pulled up. Mm -hmm. Are those the ones that you used, sir? Yes, they are. Okay, all right. Because I'm looking and, and you've got two of them in 2017 and one of them in 2018. 
Uh, and I didn't think um, that we were supposed, I, I wasn't, I, I do have uh, a disagreement with what Albert said. And Albert, Albert and I talked on the phone probably at least two or three times during the course of this, but um, I didn't think I was supposed to use sale price I, because sale, I understand sale price and assessed values can be very different. And that's why I was using the lines further near the bottom of the sheet, the Im improved fair market value and the assessed value for my comparisons. Well, you can't use the assessed value because that's, you know, that's the counties. What we're looking for is market value, what they sold for. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's, let's get some information or some opinions from the board. It's only a 2% difference. And um, I think legally, if it's within 5%, yeah, correct. we don't, we don't usually make an adjustment. Is, is that correct, Sterling? We don't expect the appraisers to be, you know. That is correct. Uh, so. Because uh, his is in line and we just cannot come to an exact penny uh, on any uh, particular property. That's why there's always a range in value. And we, simply because it is mass appraisal, uh, we are with, bound by the uh, Department of Revenue to be within that 5% range of uh, the sales information on the particular property, we are within that range. Uh, so from the tax office's point of view, we uh, feel that we, it was a fair assessment because there, if, nothing is always exactly the same. And, and we have the same information on each of those properties and the differences that are included could be anything from the size of the deck to the size of a port to the size of a stoop. Uh, we'll make that uh, to the size of the land that would make that have a slight difference. And we do not do averaging for anything and try to come up with what is the average and then apply the average to each property. Each property stands on its own using the uh, appendages and the square footages of them alone. But where we do the comparison at is that we use the same class of construction, the same grade, the same year, and the uh, and as close as possible in the same neighborhood. So that's why uh, we feel that the 305 is a fair assessment. Okay. All right. Well, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, let's get some, some discussion from the board. What what's uh, your all's take on this? I'm siding with the county on this one. I agree. I think. Uh, yeah, I think they that they're within the um, the five percent and. You get that close. I think they did a good job. And then I think I think the the, the data is a little more current too, in terms of the year. Okay. All right. Then I will entertain a motion regarding this is case number two twenty six. Move that Move. we have all the counties county position on this value. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. So, sir, we're we're going to go with the county. Now you can appeal this to the state if you like, but I think you may run across the same thing since the values are so close. But thank you for coming. Okay, thank you. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, number 227 is the Sanders, Sander and Roberta. I think that's who we've got. Says Sand, Sander and Roberta Trust. Is, is that you? Oh, okay. You have to, you're, they're muted. If you would just hit, uh, hover over your picture and at the top right hand corner. We got it. We got it. Can you I hear can. us now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yes, sir. I'm Sander. That's Roberta. All right. Well, let, let's get you both sworn in, please. If you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. And state your names, please. Sander Pomper. Roberta Blumberg. And uh, you're familiar with using this Zoom format? Yes. We're working on it. <laughs> Oops, I just lost it. This is only the second okay. time we've done this. So. Uh, all right. Now, your property, uh, are you the owners of the property on Havenwood Lane? Yes. And uh, the county's appraised it for 530000 and they've reduced it to 493000 But you think it's worth eight eighty-four thousand six seventy-five? Is that correct? 
No, what <laughs> we wish. <laughs> yeah, <that's> <laughs> no. <what it> is. <laughs> so we when all the documentation went out, it said what's the what's the value in April of 2019? Well, there was nothing here at 2019. And your record showed that at that point it was valued at 84,000, whatever. So that's why we filled out the form that way. We believe that it's worth what we paid for it, which was 475. 475? And yeah. when was that? 475,190. So he said when was that? It, that was in uh, December 18th, 2019. Okay. So for all intents and purposes this year. Okay. We're happy to pay the tax on what we paid for. We just don't understand why it's assessed for considerably more than what we paid for it. All right. So you don't have any any appraisal or anything like that. That's just what you paid for it. And that's what you think it should be worth. Right. I mean, I'm pretty sure the builder's not selling things at discounts. Right. Okay. This is a new development. All right. Okay. Well, let's hear from the county then. Um, and this is uh, Albert again. So he's already been sworn yeah. in. So what, what can you tell us about this one, Albert? So our initial value uh, for this property was 530399 And the taxpayer's opinion was 84695 <laughs> But I think when they were building it, um, you know, like when we had it, I think it was the value of the land in 2019, you know, as of that point. Uh, referencing to this appeal summary uh, from what the taxpayer, you know, provided. So I did look at our listing to make sure our listing was accurate. Um, at this point, we realized there were a few things that were off with the listing. So um, when you look at uh, my comps, uh, we did have it as a B plus, and the taxpayer said we had the number of you know like bathroom counts wrong. So it was three, you know, like it was three baths, and we did make adjustment to two and a half baths. Um, with that being said and making sure our listing was right, it brought the value down to 493,254. In that state, I had to look at sales that were going on. Um, most of the sales there was 2008 and the taxpayer had, you know, like a 2019 house. Um, the sales in that neighborhood do, you know, uh, uphold our value. Um, and the taxpayer also, I think, has some issues um, with a square foot, and then they sent out a floor plan. Uh, the floor plan they sent us was actually 255 for 2,554 square foot. Yeah. But when we went to our LDO system, we were able to make adjustment to 24. What did he say? Uh, he said 24. Okay. It was 2554, but you know, like we were, you know, but we were able to get it to 2474 using our LDO system. Uh, the taxpayer also complained about the garage being 389, and you know, we fixed that to 380 using our LDO system. But most of the sales uh, in that neighborhood do support our value, even if you look at the sale price per square foot, the taxpayer's sales price per square foot is 192. Um, right. Yeah, you know, like the other comes in the neighborhood is 212, 202, and 210. So with these, right. said, I believe our value is in line, you know, uh, with our revised value. And I therefore recommend the board to uphold our revised value. May I interject? I am their realtor. Am I allowed to talk? My um, name is Mindy Oberhart. I'll need to get you sworn in if you'll raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, I do. All right, then you may proceed. Yes, I am with REMAX United. I've been a realtor for over 30 years. Um, and um, I looked at the time of the tax value and then looked again to see what has sold. And while it is true that homes are selling higher in the neighborhood, I am not sure that the following has been taken into account. That home, the, um, the trust home, is abutting to Andrews Chapel Road, which is a fairly well-trafficked road. That, that makes it an inferior lot to me as a realtor. All other recent sales that have occurred are interior lots either backing to a retention pond or to another home. That's number one. Number two, I'm not sure 
that the, the following has been taken into account. There is a, an easement that uses up a good deal of the front yard of this property. Um, it has neighborhood signage and wall. And that for most people would be construed as a negative. And I'm not sure that that was taken into account. And from my real estate background and uh, experience, most buyers would view that as a negative. And we would hope that that would be taken into consideration. Okay, uh, Albert, did you consider those with your when you valued the property? Yeah, because all those, um, all those, you know, other properties are in the same neighborhood code. We have something called neighborhood code adjustment, and that is applied to every property in that neighborhood. So, you know, when we take into consideration, you know, that properties in the neighborhood, let's say, maybe a subdivision, you know. So these are, you know, like these are parcels within the same, you know, neighborhood code. It's not in a different neighborhood code. But, and but all of them, point, but the, you know, the, like the point that was just made though is that this is this property backs up to a busy road and also has the some common area, right. a common area easement in the front of it. We that, sent you we sent you a I'm sorry to interrupt, but we sent you a copy. It should be with our materials. Well, let's, let's, let's the size let's, of the easement. Let's give him a chance to respond. So did you consider that, sir, when, uh, Albert, when you, uh, you know, that there is traffic along that road? Yeah, everything is considered in the neighborhood adjustment. So, yes. Okay. All right. Anything else that, sir, would you like to contribute something else? Mr. Um, yeah, I'd like to say a couple of things. Number one, the unit that we have that was appraised is different from every other unit being built here. Um, as you can see from the document, which is now up, the easement takes probably of the total square footage somewhere between 10 and 15% of the total size of the lot. And of the usable lot that where the home's not, it takes up almost, almost 40%. Mm -hmm. So I think that to some degree would mitigate the, the cost or the, the valuation of the lot just in and of itself. Um, and it, you can see how close we are to um, Andrews Chapel. Also, it turns out that one of your other boards has just approved a stoplight at the corner of Andrews Chapel and Leedsville, which is only 500 feet from our front door. Okay. All, all right, sir. Well, let's close the public hearing and move on. All right, board, uh, what, what's your feeling about this? Uh, two things here. Uh, Okay, one one is that uh, we just talked about being within the the percentage of uh, appraisal not being exact. Uh, two, on a new house, my daughter's getting a house built now, and and, and it's the same house uh, from the time she went on the contract three months later, it's seven thousand dollars more, the exact same house, different lot. So, you know. Taking all that in consideration and, and, and uh, the fact that the county is within that margin of error, I would sort of lean toward the county's position on this one. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Mr. Chair, this is Wendell. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm looking, I look at the owners, um, the owners of Platinum out. Um, which I wanted to ask the question. Well, it's too late for public comment, but these same items, as far as the sight line, the net footprint, the building envelope, and the setbacks on the property, they were components of this at time of purchase. Nothing changed. So I understand the comments made by the realtor regarding this. I look at their plat map. However, as Mr. Williams just stated, this is a 4% margin with respect to the acquisition price and the assessed value of the property, so it is less than 5%. Now you can't, it's 0.963. So within the market that we're in, and I do see this, there possibly would be the challenge for this in the years to come because of traffic flow, traffic patterns that could have an adverse effect on the owners. But at this point now, I don't see it regarding that. So I'll make my comments in line with Mr. Williams. I'd be more in line to support the county's position based on the information that we have in the comparables. Any comments from other board members? 
No, I was thinking along those same lines as Wendell, so. And I'm in agreement also. Okay, then I'll entertain a motion regarding item 227. I move that I, we hold the county's position on this property. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so we're gonna stay with the county's position. You can appeal this to the uh, the state if you, you know, if you're not satisfied. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, let's move on to number 228. Erin Bergstrom, there, there you are. We can unmute her. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. I Thanks for morning, please. Oh. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. And um, are you comfortable with the Zoom format? Yes. And uh, are you the owner of this property on Delafield Avenue? I am. Okay. All right. Well, good. So, uh, you know, the county's appraised it, I think, for 173, you think, and they've reduced it to 161. You think it's worth 119. Is that correct? That's what our information says. That's say. correct. What are yes. you basing that on? What, you know, why do you think it's worth that? Yeah. Um, thanks for hearing, hearing my side of things. Um, it's based on um, what I understand is being looked at, which is the a reasonable price that it could have sold for on January 1st, 2019 uh, market value. And this particular property was actually on the market January 1st, 2019. It was listed in October of 2018 at 125 um, and had been sitting on the market at 125 on January 1st and into 2019. Um, and I purchased it uh, um, in August of 2019 for 115 after it had been sitting on the market at 125. Um, and I suggested 119 because that was the appraised value um, that I received when I purchased the home. And you, what was the date on that appraisal? Uh, the date on the appraisal was July 16th, 2019. All right. Anything else? Did, did you supply a copy of that appraisal to the county? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. I guess, I guess that's Tim. I haven't seen Tim in a while. Can you show us the, the grid, the adjustment grid, please? Okay. All right. Well, let, let's leave that there and then we'll hear from the county. Uh, let's see who we got. Gino, are, are you available, Gino? Yep, I'm right here. All right. Let's get you sworn in, please. You okay. raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. State your name and position, please. My name is uh, Gino McCree. I'm a Durham County residential appraiser. And, um, I was the appraiser that was in charge of parcel number one two eight seven zero uh, four. Um, the initial uh, twenty twenty assessment of the property was one hundred seventy three thousand eight hundred forty seven dollars. Uh, verified the listing of the dwelling um, and using the appraiser that was uh, submitted to the office, I was able to make some adjustments uh, to the square footage, particularly on the uh, second floor, the uh, attic space, um, and I also made a change to the grade. Uh, based on the condition of the house. And being also that the uh, the location, I was able to put a 10% adjustment based on the location of the house, which brought the value from the original 173847 down to the 161022. Uh, and that's the recommendation that I'm recommending we uphold today. Well, what about her statement about what she just paid for it and what it was on the market for? Yeah, I, I understand that. But the, uh, the appraisal was done on 7-16-19. But based on the comps that I was able to find uh, on that particular area, uh, the sales that I had, the uh, based on what our assessed value of January 1, 2019, um, there were some comps that I was able to find that showed that the sales of particular houses in that same neighborhood were selling from around 241 uh, to around 260. So, um, and those houses were pretty much around the same square footage, uh, they were the same type of house and around the same age house. Okay. 
All right, then let's hear some uh, discussion from the board. What, what's your all's take on this? Um, the only the only thing that I would that that I'm thinking about is condition. Mm -hmm. um, I I feel like um, that Delafield was not in great condition when it was on the market. Well, Miss um, what what kind of condition was this property in when you bought it? Um, yeah, I would say. Uh, I'm not exactly, um, not, not very good. <laughs> um, it, you know, liv livable, um, but sort of, that may be, a be where I would put it in it. It's also, so yeah, I think, you know, livable condition, but not, not good condition. Um, it is next door to a tire shop, um, right on Roxborough road and the attic the what what's counted as square footage, which I think Gino had to use for the comps, was uh, is basically a finished attic um, that the county was uh, footage because it, it does have a duct running up there. Um, however, it's basically just a finished, partially finished attic, not actually a second story. All right, Tony, I didn't mean to cut you off. What so what? Does that help you with your your feeling about the condition? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I had actually been in the, the house that's on Lavender. That one is in pretty good condition. Like it is, it, it was, it showed really well. It, you know, gleamed. Um, and so, I mean, if, if that's at 244, I think it actually like the 161 does make sense. But I don't, I you know. That's my only thought is it, just making sure that we looked at the condition and made sure that that was reflected in, in what the county had made adjustment for. And uh, Gina, you had used a, a grade of C minus in the I had, yeah, it was, it was originally a C, but once I looked at the uh, appraisal and I was able to see some pictures or whatever, I took it down to a C minus. And you also have a uh, depreciation at average and the others are very good and good. Is that correct? Yes. So you did consider condition of this? Yes. Board. Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, any other comments from other board members? Are we ready for a vote? Then I will entertain a motion regarding this one. Uh, this is property 228. Well, I would move that we uh, accept the county's value. Do I have a second? second? Second, this is Wendell. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? So Ms. Bergstrom, we, we agree with the county on this one and you're able to appeal this to the state if you're not satisfied. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess just, uh, so you're not able to consider the actual market um, value since it was on the market well with the, at, at a certain rate the county used and he did consider you know the grade and the depreciation we feel like his his value is correct you know individual sale is is valid but you know it's there's just one where i've got market sales from other properties that so you can't actually consider you know the the market i guess the, the reasonable sale price for this particular property since it was actually on the market at that time. Just based on the information we've got, it looks like that it, it sold for under market, even though you know, mm -hmm. you've been on the market for a while. But we, we need to move on. So you can't appeal this to the state if you're not happy, all right? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, I see Reginald Muhammad on Banner Road. Is Mr. Muhammad available? Yes. All right, um, I need to get you uh, sworn in, please. And you can affirm if you don't want to swear. If you'll raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I affirm. And uh, you are the owners of this property on Banner Street, is that correct? Yes, me and my wife, and she's present also. All right, and are you comfortable using this Zoom format? Yes, me and my wife are. All right. And ma'am, if you're going to say anything, you'll need to be sworn in also. Are you, are you going to 
say anything or are you just here to observe? I'm gonna speak. Okay, let's get you sworn in too then if you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, I affirm. All right. So now you know that the county has valued your property at 224,000 and they lowered it to 214. You think it's worth 168. We need to know why you think it's worth that amount. Because our property was appraised um, at this around the same time that the assessment was made by the county. We have an appraisal report that was submitted um, whenever we did the appeal. And there are four comps that were in the appraisal report. It's a full appraisal report that was done for Navy Federal Credit Union. Um, not because we had um, refinanced our home at that time. Not only that, but whenever the adjustment was made, of course, um, whenever we realized that the property value had gone up, initially we did not know. But whenever we found out and we contacted um, the tax assessor's office on June 2nd, I sent an email to Mr. McCree, um, basically asking about the value and how they assess the value. And he looked at it again and told me that the value was readjusted to 214,979. I responded to his email and asked what basis did he um, make the adjustment down for $10,002 because it seemed to me as if he had done some kind of an adjustment to the property. And I say that because I am a realtor, so I am familiar with comps. Um, but I never got a response from him as to why he chose to go from 224981 to 214979 Not only that, but even though I've called the office and asked, we never actually received any information on any comparative properties that were used to come up with either value, um, nor were we ever, um, and so I was curious about that. To this day, we still don't have a question, an answer. All right, well, he's, he's, he's here, so we'll ask him. But before we do that, uh, Tim, can you roll up a little bit so we see the date of this valuation? Um, it's, it's September, well, our, our appraisal was done on February 15, 2018 by Edwin Farr, who is a, global, who is a certified um, licensed appraiser. Okay. And it was done for Navy Federal. And you understand that this value is January 1st of 2019. So it's about a year different. Okay. okay, but I still don't think that the, that's a large difference, though. The difference is 56981 Even if you go with the second lower amount, that's still a difference of $46,979. That's a huge uh, difference. I understand. I, I was just sort of making sure that you understood the facts. Okay, and let's bring in uh, Gino McRae. If you, uh, you heard her, her questions, could you help her out, please? Gino, are you still there? Okay, I'm back. Okay. Um, my name is Gino McCree. I'm the appraiser that was in charge of this property at uh, 3007 Banner Street. Um, the uh, uh, initial uh, assessment of the property we had at 224, um, 981. Uh, upon looking at the uh, properties themselves and the comps that we had in the area, um, I was able to make an adjustment to those uh, to the uh, dwelling itself. Uh, the grade, particularly in the grade, uh, I took the grade from a C down to a C minus uh, and verified the listing that we had. And that was where the $10,000 came from when I took the grade down based on the comps that I was able to find in that particular area. There were uh, three comps that I was able to use uh, 204 East Murray Street, uh, 309 Bond Air Avenue, and 2807 Herring Boulevard. Um, the biggest dif difference that I was able to find in these particular comps that I was using is the year built in the subject house is 1998. The comps that um, in their particular area range from 1969 to 1972. That is one of the biggest difference in, in the value of the property itself. As you look, the square footages are pretty much the same. 
um, or fairly close. And the, the depreciation where we have it as average, um, some of those are very good, average, and good. So I took the lower of the two, the lower, and made sure that it was an average house, which it is in the average condition from what I could, could, I could tell. Um, thus, that's why I'm recommending that we uphold the value of the 214.979. May I say two things, sir? Yes, ma'am. Um, number one, the, the date sold on the comps that he used are all over the place. The first one is May 16th, 2017. The second one is January 22nd, 2018. The third one is November 15th, 2018. As a realtor, there's no way that I could have ever used comps with that large of a spread. So I don't know how it works for you all, but that's a very large spread with comps. And um, my other, I had another question and it skipped me. The, the lady that was before us, Erin, I believe was her name on the screen. Her yeah. home isn't that far from us. And I heard her whenever she said 161 was what she thought. 168 is what I was appraised as. So I don't understand how, um, can someone just explain to me how you can have such a large range for your dates for comps? Because as you know, the market value constantly changes. Mm -hmm. And when you have that large of a spread, it's going to significantly impact the numbers. All right, well, let's hear from Mr. McCray. So basically our, our value is based on market value. So as of January 1, 2019, so I'm able to use sales that occur basically 2017 and 2018. And when I try to use, when I find, try to find comps, I try to find comps that are around the same age, the same style, and the same square footage. So I have the, the same, uh, basically, information that you sent me, that I was sent in the, that was sent in the appraisal. Uh, the comps are, the values range from 73000 to 144000 So there's a big range, there was a big range right there. And the square footage in the, the comps ain't range from, uh, I'm looking at their uh, 1106 square foot, 1127 square foot, and 1544 square foot. And where we had your square footage is 1292. So okay, that's- I, I understand that. However, Mr. McCree, you've never set foot on our property. You've never been in our home. You've never seen anything pertaining well, to our home. Man. Man, like what, we what, have an appraiser that has. So uh, I don't understand how your analysis could be more accurate than the analysis of a licensed appraiser who has actually been in our home. Well, let, let's let's move on with this. Let, let's get some input from the, from the board here. Uh, I, I'm looking at the appraisal report that was done. And your house is, the, this house is 20 years old. And two of the comparables, one is 77 years old and the other is 82 years old. And that gives me a little bit of concern. That, that's a pretty big difference there. So I, I, what, what is the rest of the board? What, what, what is your feeling about this property? Mr. Chair, this is Wendell. What the effective age from when the appraisal, the appraisal was done for the taxpayer, what is the effective age? I see it on the screen, but it's so light, so I can't make it out. But I was trying to look at the effective age also based on the range of um, ages provided for the comparable subject property in 1998. What's the effective age listed for the subject property? Well, there's no effective age. They have an actual age of 20. Actual age. Okay. Actual age is 20. 20. Comparable one is 77. Comparable two is 20. And number three is 82. Hmm. Now, two of those comparables so are really nice. old. They're really old. Yeah. And they didn't make an adjustment for that. They made all the adjustments in the condition. In the condition? Right, right. Similarities in land value? Are the, are the, is the dirt similar? Uh, I think so. Uh, you think so? Uh, Tell me. Okay. So a yeah. couple of downward adjustments because a couple of the comparables had, had larger land. Mm -hmm. Larger land. Okay. It adjust. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, what's, what's the rest of the board? I mean, what, what are your feelings about this? It's a big range. I think the comps that the county used are especially the last two or closer time frame wise November and I think the other one I can't I can't see the date for the third one even though the first one was made that probably helped it bring it down rather than hurt it 
So, but the two comps that he used being November 18, being one of them were closer to than her appraisal, which was dated February of 18. Any other comments or what are you all feeling about this as far as the county versus the uh, the appraisal that she supplied? I think I, I'm I'm sort of with Jeanette at the county's comps number two and three seem to be at least more recent, more current to the date that we're trying to get close to. Um, Well, then uh, are we all ready for a motion? I'll entertain a motion on this is number 229, if there's no other discussion. Mr. Make Chair, one deal. We uphold the county. Okay, uh, Mr. Bowler, do you have a, a comment? Or? Yeah, I was gonna just ask the question. The taxpayer made a comment about condition of the property relative to the county's value. And I wanted to know if a condition inspection was warranted in this case, given the spread being so wide based on where we are, how much from Mr. Gino's um, perspective is that? Well, from looking at the, uh, from looking at the appraisal itself, the, uh, yes, sir. the average, con it was an average condition. That's okay. what this listed as average condition. So that's why, and then okay. our assessment and depreciation is average condition okay. based on okay. the age. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a, a motion from Ms. Hussey. Do you have a, a second? Okay, what was, I'm sorry, what was Ms. Hussey's uh, uh, motion, David? Uh, you want to restate it for us, please? Uh, to uphold the county's valuation. Oh, okay, go okay. ahead. All right, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, all right, we're going to stay with the county's value, uh, Ms. Muhammad. So if you would like to okay, so appeal this to the state. What about the 4% or 5% spread that you all said? This is a large spread. You're over the 5%, so that's why we heard it. But we still think that the county's value is correct. How do we appeal to the state, sir? Uh, you will be getting a notification from the county and they will tell you how to do that. Okay, and will they have access to this um, Zoom meeting? No, if you go to the, the state, it starts all over brand new. So. Okay, but, but will the state have access to the testimony today? That's what I'm asking you. No, it will not. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, let's move on. Let's see, we have uh, Patricia Dickinson. Is she? Um, actually, that's that's me. I'm, I'm the owner of record. My name is Richard McDonald. Uh, Patricia uh, Dickinson was the previous owner that I purchased the property from. Okay, when did you pro purchase the property? In February. February of this year? Of this year. Okay. All right, well, let's get you sworn in, please, sir. If you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Are you comfortable with using this Zoom format? I am. All right, and uh, so, Starling, I got a question for you. If he bought this property in February of this year, does he have the right to appeal? I guess he does. Yes, he can. He can appeal. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Because remember, in the county, you can appeal anyone's value, uh, in, even in opposition of that value. So he is uh, perfectly legitimate to appeal this valuation, but it cannot be based upon his 2020 purchase price. It would be the 19 valuation. All right. You understand the value is January 1st of 2019, Mr. McDonald. That's the value we go by. Okay, well, I mean, regardless, even that value is, is incorrect. I have a, a current appraisal on the property uh, that was conducted in February of this year, uh, in which the value of the property was assessed at $355,000 based on the appraisal. Uh, the current value tax assessment on the property is $447,724. So there's a pretty significant spread on the actual value of the property and what the county is currently assessing it at. Right, but we cannot consider uh, an appraisal that has happened that far away from the valuation date that we need. Do you have any information about what the property was worth back in January of 20? Did I miss, was he sworn in? Uh, do I have information on what the, the, the home was worth back then? 
Well, I'm showing that the tax assessed value in 2018 was 383.124 was was the value in 2018. Excuse me, was he sworn in? Yes, I swore him in. Okay, I missed it. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. So, uh, again, we need information about what the property is worth as of January 1st of, of 2019. Do you have any information? You know, not, not the assessed value, but uh, market value. The market value? Um, I pulled up, let's see here. I pulled up several comps that were valuing it. There's a 6811 Hunt, Hunting Ridge Road, uh, which is in this neighborhood, in which the fair market value was 170 per square foot. Um, I mean, I, I wasn't aware that a current appraisal that was completed wouldn't suffice for the assessment of the value of the property. Okay. So I might, you know, my, my assertion would be that, okay, if we're going off of 20, you know, 2018 values or 2019 values, excuse me, if we have a current appraisal that's showing that the home is worth 355,000, then I should actually be asserting that the property is worth even less than that number. Well, are, are these your comparables that we're looking at on the screen right now? Are these the ones that you- uh, Yeah, these, these are some comps from 2018, I believe. Okay. Can we go back, uh, Tim, and look at the, the comparables one, two, and three? All right. So I'm looking at yours is valued at 157 a square foot, correct? And I'm looking at 154, 127, and 182. And scroll uh, up again, please, Tim, so we can see the others. So 150, 175, and 156. So it looks like yours is kind of in that range based on this. Is that correct? I mean, based on those numbers, yeah, but clearly uh, there's a significant difference in the value of my property and these properties. If the assessed value and what I'm getting at a price set for what I purchased it for this year is so much lower than, than what my assessed value is. Okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's hear from the county. This is... Uh, Travis Westry, is, is he here, Travis? Yes, I'm here. All right, let's get you sworn in, please. You will raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Uh, yes. State your name and position, please. Hi, my name is Travis Westry. I'm a residential uh, tax appraiser with Durham County. Okay. And how did you, you know, you, you've heard what the uh, property owner said. Correct. Um, this, um, the homeowner uh, purchased this property um, in February of 2020. Um, and, and I told him that basically the property was appraised uh, based on comps from 2017, 2018. Um, and for the 2019 um, but he ended up purchasing the property in 2000, uh, 2020, uh, for about a hundred thousand uh, dollars. yeah, about a hundred thousand dollars less, um, than, than what he paid for it. Okay. And what, what comparables did you use for this property? Um, I actually you I use some of the ones he used, uh, which is 6410 Falcon uh, Falcon Ridge Road. Um, yes, it's right up here in front of you. Um, the 6811 Hunting Ridge Road and 6821 Hunting Ridge Road. Um, all Am I able to make a comment? Just let him finish, and then you can. Okay, um, these properties. Um, all are within about a hundred to two hundred square feet uh, of of the comparables, um, and if you use it as far as the square footage of these properties, um, they were all in line. 
of his property. Uh, so these that we're looking at now are the ones that you picked. Is that correct? Correct. Is it well? Okay. It looks like that you have his value a little bit higher than all the other properties. Is that correct? Correct. Square foot. Yes. Um, okay, but you have him listed as average, uh, and all the others is great as good, right? Yes. So what I did um, because these properties, um, before everything was done, his property was good. I, I did change this property to average. So I did reduce, um, I did reduce that property um, to average instead of good, which is what it was in the beginning. So that's why you lowered it down to that first lower. Correct. Down to 427. Okay. Yes. All right, Mr. McDonald, did you have a question or comment? Yeah, regarding the properties that he's listing here as the comps, um, number one, uh, my house is directly across from Farrington Road, which is an extremely busy road. It's almost considered, uh, basically it's close to a freeway, more or less. Um, it's also directly across from a fire station, which we hear the fire trucks all day long, every day, okay? If you look at comp two and comp three, when you go down there, those are nestled in the back of the neighborhood. They back up to woods. They have significantly larger lot sizes as well as significantly more privacy. Also number one as well, that backs up to a lake right there. And those are all significantly more desirable properties. The property that I purchased sat vacant for over a year and is in need of serious repairs, which have not been completed. And the value of the property, if I could put my property on the market right now and sell it for $447,000, I would already have the moving signs up and have the, the moving trucks in front of my house. It's just not possible for it to be sold at that amount. That would make it far and away the most expensive property in the neighborhood. Um, and, and this house is just not even close to that value. Um, I mean, it's just really not, not even close to that. So I understand what the, the calculations are saying, but I have a, an appraisal stating that the house is much less valuable than what the county is valuing it at. And furthermore, I, I don't think I could ever sell it for that amount. Um, and, and prices have increased since 2018, 2019. So if anything, it, it should be worth less than what the, the, the home appraised for that I have. Okay, all right, well, let, let's move on then. So uh, let's get some input from the board regarding this property. I have a question. The uh, homeowner said there's work that needed to be done to the house. What kind of work are you talking about? I mean, cosmetic, but every house in this okay. neighborhood has, has brand new finishes, has floor to ceiling, you know, the, you know, everything. And it's just, it's not that. It's not that house. Every house in this neighborhood is completely remodeled and extremely nice. And if you put my house compared to some of the other ones that are in the neighborhood, uh, it, it would never sell. It, it would be impossible to, and tried to sell it for that price. Uh, it, it's just not gonna comp out like that. Okay. All right, any other comments from the board regarding this property? Was there a location adjustment made <clears throat> based on the information? Uh, no, there was no location uh, adjustment made. Um, the, as far as the condition of the property, um, I did reduce that um, from good to average. So I did reduce that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we end up taking about $20,000 off that property. Right. Well, it looks like to me, based on what he's saying about the location in the neighborhood, that can we not make a location adjustment? Um, as far as the, as far as the Farrington Road, um, I didn't see any reason um, to reduce that anymore. Um, but that wasn't a question. That the question <laughs> was, can you know, can we can we do a location just not that you whether or not you saw the saw a dean. I'm not trying to be smart. Right. But right. So I mean, yeah. So okay, I, I didn't see it. Um, but if I mean, if it's if it's something that you all think it should be done. Yeah, let's let's look at that land value. 
and let's let's see if we can adjust something there. Yeah. We've got it sixty four. Can you scroll? Can you scroll the comps up a little bit so I can, you can see more? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, we can come down. Okay, thank you. So they're showing a value of sixty four three for this property, and the others are. Well, one of them's a, a higher, but the others are the same. That one that's higher, you've taken that into consideration. That eighty thousand dollars is that the one that's on the lake? No, that's no, not. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Travis, let's see what we can do with that land value. Can you make an adjustment to that land value that would reduce this value, the property? Uh, that would be. It's something that I could do, um, but it just depends on, I, I think Tim typically does, does that on you all's end. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I can do that, I am Tim. Um, I could bring the uh, screen over like I usually do if you're all looking for adjustments. Yeah, yeah, why don't you do that, yeah. So right now there's no adjustment made for that. Is that correct? Correct. So that, what, what do you think? You think we need some sort of uh, location adjustment? How, how much of an adjustment do you think would be appropriate? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking 10 to 15,000. What's everybody else think? Okay. I, can that. I guess you have to do a percentage, don't you? Yeah. Why don't you start off with what, 15% just see what it looked like, 20%? I don't know. I do 15 first, and let's see. That's 10,000 right there. You think that's enough, or you think it needs to be larger? Mm -hmm. Good, Jeanette. <laughs> Does that, put it, does that put it more in line from an adjustment perspective that with the other lots of comparable size in that location? No, it'll make it less, but it's, they're, you know, it's, it's going to be $10,000 less than the others because it's... Right. But, but the reason it went down, they said it's less because, you know, because of the fireplace, because of the busy road. So, you know, right. it, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be consistent with the rest of the lots. I don't I don't. Yeah. All right, so what do you all want to do? You want to move along with this 10%? Huh? That's 10% 10, 10 since it came out. I'm sorry, 15 Oh, wait, we started at 15? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 15 right. which is $10,000. Right. Uh, well, Jeanette, I, I, you, you had to lead on this. What do you think, Jeanette? Because I, I, I thought I could go more. <laughs> I mean, 15 to 20 percent, 20 percent would be the most, I would say. That's what I, okay. I, well, let's leave it at 15 percent. And then okay. Ask, I'm good with that. Okay. All right. Any other adjustments you think that we need to make? Do you think the county's value is correct on this one? Anything on condition or repairs? Uh, Travis has it as an average condition. Would there be any factors based on what's needed that the property owner, does the property owner have a checklist or a cost basis, cost to cure based on the item he said needed repair that have not been done? Well, he's got all the rest of them are, Travis has is good. So he's already okay. considered some conditions. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, well, let's move on with this. I will entertain a motion regarding, this is number 230. Well, go ahead, Jeanette. I make a motion that we accept it with the 15% uh, reduction in land value. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, it carries. Uh, all right, sir, you can appeal this if you're not happy with to the, uh, the state and you'll get information about that in the mail from the county. And we did reduce it some for you, all right? Okay, and then for, so for next year's tax assessment, that's when I would be presenting the appraisal for the purchase price in this year? You would need, no, you would need to have a, it's the value is at January 1st of 19 until the whole county is reevaluated. That's the number we're looking, the time we're looking for. And okay. an appraiser can go back and back, backdate an appraisal. He's okay. In, okay? Um, All, right. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Second that. Who's Sorry. Second? 
motion? Uh, who said David? David. And what was the final value? Uh, it's what's the, Tim? What's the final value? Do you have that? Oh yes. Sorry, let me get it back up on the screen real quick. Uh, yeah. uh, looks like it's uh, 417900. Thank you. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, is Jonathan Sander, is he available? Oh, there he is, all right. Can we unmute Mr. Sander, please? You got me. Hello, how are you, sir? Doing fine. Let me get you to raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, I do. State your name again, please. Jonathan Sander. And you own this property on Bland Spring Place, is that correct? Yes, I do with my wife. And you are comfortable with using the Zoom format, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. All right, now you know that the county has valued your property at... Uh, well, it was originally 513. They've lowered it to 484. You think it's worth 4125, according to the information I've got. What are you basing your value on? Right. And so um, when I initially put gave some info mm -hmm. back uh, for the appeal, that's uh, that was essentially the sales price that I mentioned there. But the property was put on the market on August 8th, 2018 for 439.9. Um, five months later, it was still on the market on January 1st, 2019 for 424900 Um, We had an appraisal done, which you guys should have, on February 11th, 2019. And the appraisal value at that time was 433000 So yeah, to us, it feels like the value, the market value at that time, and based on that appraisal, which is very close to January 1st, would be closer to the 424,900 to 433. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Did you supply that appraisal to the uh, the county? Yeah, I uploaded that through the portal. So that should be in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And let's see, Travis was the appraiser on this and he's already been sworn. So let's go. Yep. So, February, so that's like a month after the, the valuation date. Right. Well, let's let's look at the uh, the adjustment grid, please, Tim. Okay. Okay. And all right, Travis, you've uh, you've seen this appraisal, I'm assuming. Yes. Um. And um. The comparables uh, sale for number three, uh, it was about 1.84 miles away. Um, and then the comparables sale for number two was about 1.53 miles away. And the comparable sale on number one, um, it was about one, uh, about 0.26 miles away. Um, and this property um, on the comps that I have, um, I have a property that's less than a quarter of a mile away. I have another property that's uh, comp number two uh, was about 0 .5, 0 0.52 miles away. And I have another property that was only 0 0.62 miles away. Um, and for these properties, um, the square footage um, was very close to the subject property, which was about, because the property was about 4,118 square foot away. And all of my properties um, were closer um, to the subject property. Okay. All right, what's, what's the, the pleasure of the board? Any questions or comments? I think my my only comment is just knowing where Bland Spring is, the 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 quality of the neighborhood um, is different from you know Chancellor's Ridge, which I'm sorry, the Alumni Avenue homes, Maris Court, 
Um, I, don't, I, I think there are, there's definite differences. And I just wonder, you know, if anything was taken into account to reflect that. Yes, but the, um, the alumni homes, um, all the homes uh, were B minus average homes. Um, as far as the, the 216 alumni, the 205 alumni, and the 316 uh, Mars Court, um, they're all uh, conventional, uh, B minus, and average condition. Um, all the properties were between 1996 um, and 2001. I mean, I, I understand that the homes themselves may be comparable, but the the neighborhoods are very different in terms of popularity and um, sellability because of the amenities that are offered in those in those neighborhoods, like swimming pools and that sort of thing, which is not offered where Bland Spring is. I think that's stage stop, isn't it? Yes. yes. Um, I mean, that's just, so I feel like there there could be a land difference or a, something that would be pertaining to the neighborhood. Does well, that make I'm sense? A, I'm, a, I'm a little concerned too. I mean, because we this is an appraisal of within, you know, a month. And, you know, I understand the county does a good job, but it's not the same level, I think it shouldn't be, that an appraiser would do, the, you know, a conventional fee appraiser would do. So I tend to agree with Tony that I, I think maybe that the, the county's value is high. Um, well, the whole thing is that the, um, on eight Bland Spring, um, the map acres uh, for that property is 0 0.71. And if you look, at the land value um, for those three comps that I have on alumni and Mars, um, that map acres is 0 0.23, 0 0.28, and 0.234. And they're valued over 10,000 and 15,000 as far as the map acres go. So you think saying the size compensates for the fact that it's not as nice a neighborhood? Correct. Okay. Of course, oh, I see what you're saying. They almost doubled in more than double. Yeah, triple, almost triple. triple in, in terms yeah, it's of about triple as far as that the map acres goes. Oh, okay. Right. Um, and it looks like all the comparables that the uh, appraiser used were a lot smaller. So he made some. $47,000, $21,000 adjustments on some of those. And your per uh, square foot value, Travis, is less than the, or equal to the ones that you use. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. What's the pleasure of the board on this one? I mean, I just have to say, I can't imagine getting anywhere near that sales price and stage stop. So, I mean, I just. Well, what do you what do you think we should do then? Do you think we need to reduce this somehow, the valuation somehow? We could lower the grade, although it's not really the improvement; it's sort of the whole neighborhood. I know. Let's. Tim, let, let's pull this up and, and see if we can make an adjustment to it. Can we change that grade to C plus down from B minus? So that gives it a value of 449. Mm. Is that something you'd be more comfortable with, Tony? I think that's better. All right, I do too. I agree, I agree. Okay, all right then I will entertain a motion regarding this property. I move that we would accept the adjusted value of 449. Is that 449.774? Yes. Yes. Hey, do I have a second? Second. second. All, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, the motion carries. All right, sir, Good. so we forward it down to 449. Good, thank you for considering. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, let's, let's move along. Uh, next, we have 
uh, is Angel Bowers uh, in the in the Zoom here? Angel Bowers. Okay, don't see anybody. Looks like they're within five hundred dollars anyway. <laughs> Let's move through that one kind of quickly. Let's get the uh, the county on this one. Who's who's the uh, county? Looks well, like nobody's here for this. Where where's the? Uh... Is this Riggs? Christina Riggs. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm trying to start my video and it. It's not wanting, to, oh, there I am. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's move quickly on this because this looks like a quick one. So it looks like the county is at 511, 544, and they want 511. I mean, that's clearly within probably 1%. So uh, I don't know that we need to really ask you any questions <laughs> unless you've got anything else to add. Well, the, the number that the taxpayer um, put in the appeal summary, 511,000, he states is just an arbitrary number that they do not necessarily disagree with the county's uh, 2019 reappraisal. Um, it, his issue is um, he's asking for a $1,000 allowance rebate or adjustment to his city tax bill, which we do not have the authority to grant. Um, so no changes were made to his value. Okay. All right. Any questions on this property? I'll entertain a motion regarding number 232. I'll make a motion to the county. <laughs> do I have a second? Second. Wendell, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All aye. Oh, shit. I didn't. I didn't Swear you in, Ms. Riggs. Raise your right hand. You mm -hmm. swear up front the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you God. I do. State your name and your position with the county, please. Christina Riggs, Durham County um, Tax uh, Appraiser. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, Ann Munn. Is Ann Munn available? Is she on here? This is another one that looks like you've pretty much come down Ms. Riggs to the value that, that they were asking for. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, Ms. Uh, Munn agreed to the value, uh, which there is an email uh, providing written confirmation in the system that uh, Tim could pull up if you would like for him to. Um, she accepted the reduced value of $753,440. Okay, all right, then I will entertain a motion from the board regarding item number 233. A move we uphold the county, county's value. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, let's move on to uh, Michael Holmes. And I thought I saw Mr. Holmes on there. there. If you could unmute them, please. Okay, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Holmes, if, uh, I need to get you sworn in. You'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And are you familiar? Are you okay with using this Zoom format for your appeal? Yes. And you own this property on Montague Avenue? Correct. And uh, you understand that the value from the county is 439 that's been reduced to about 431 you think the value is more like 395 is that correct correct and what are you basing your your lower value on okay we have an appraisal that was done on 819 that values it at two uh, actually at 397 819 of this year no august 19th oh august 19th okay. august 2019 august 2019 okay all right and they valued it at 397 397 and you realize that the value we're looking for is January 1st of 2019, correct? I was looking at the homes on our block. Now, yeah. mind you, this is a brand new community, so they're all the same age, same condition. Okay. Uh, the assessed value of all of the homes except for four on our block went down by considerable numbers. 
a $97,000 drop, a $57,000 drop, an $83,000 drop, a $104,000 drop on 1124 Montague, large drops. And the increases on our block were 2,800, 13,000, a 1,000, and ours was 35,766. Well, you know, we don't know if, if they may have made mistakes back when they were uh, done the first time. So what we really need to know is what the market value of your property as of January 1st, 2019 is. So well, on another house in our, we pay, we live, our backyard base is Lee, Leesville Road, which is a double yellow line, busy, busy street. There's another house in our community um, that has the same square footage that's valued at 424429 It's uh, 1006 Tuscarora. And it's- so, Again, we're, we're not interested in what the, the tax value of other properties are. We, we're interested in your property and what other properties have sold for that are similar to yours. That's well, what we base it on. That we're being compared to, the comps that we were given. Right. Are in a different part of our community in our community, we live in the residence collection, which is the middle of the road collection. We were compared to homes in the manors collection, which is the high end of our community. Also, you were looking for a January 2019 uh, appraisal on the property. The house wasn't finished and we didn't move in until August of 2019. Right, I think they, well, I'll, I'll let the appraiser explain how, how that works. But uh, so your main, that sounds like that's your main point is that your house is, not as nice as the house it was compared, houses it was compared to. Correct? Absolutely yes. not. Okay. It's a right. that's, that's, a valid, that's a valid concern. Okay. And we're on okay. very good road. All right, let's, let's hear from the appraiser on this one. Let's see, we've got uh, Albert. Albert is yeah. on this one. And he's so a our initial appraised value, oh, sorry. Our okay. initial appraised value was 439,026. Uh, the tax opinion, uh, the taxpayer's opinion was 395000 And if you can pull uh, the comps, um, there were actually comps in the same neighborhood, um, the same, you know, um, you know, like neighborhood, which I did take a look at it. Although the taxpayer did, you know, like provide um, an appraisal, the appraisal didn't really have any comps on it. And also it was done after the fact. So what I did was I looked into our LDO and actually made some adjustment uh, to the square foot because our LDO gives us, you know, like the builders, you know, square foot. So I made adjustment to it and that's what brought the value down to 431,266, which I recommend the board to uphold. These are same, you know, houses in the same neighborhood, 111 White, you know, Bar Plain, which actually um, is a year older than the subject. Uh, and they also in 2018. If you look at a listing, our listing is, you know, what in line, you know, uh, with the comps. They all, they all be, be you know, minus. They are what average. And then when you look at the sale price per square foot, it's in line with pretty much the 2018 sale. So I do recommend the board to uphold our value because these are sales of similar houses in the same subdivision in the same neighborhood. These, these are not similar houses. These are in the Manners collection on the other side of uh, Fendel Farm Parkway there. They're not in there. We're backing Leesville Road and they As are you can open see. to a big green field in the middle of the community. Look at the purchase prices. Well, price how are these houses better than yours? I understand the green field. You yeah. say that it's a, it's a what, what's different about them? Why are they so much nicer than yours? Because of where, first of all, where they are in the community, okay. square footage is similar, but they're sprawling ranches, and some have upstairs, but they're they're in a complete, they're completely different homes. Then the the uh, um, the, the um, stuff that's put into the house, like the refrigerators and the stove and the, and the cabinets, are all high end stuff uh, that was put in uh, products that were put in those houses. Um, that's why they were they they cost more or even like say the same size piece of property. They have three car garages over there. We only have two car garages over here. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, the sale prices are almost a hundred thousand more because the houses aren't even, they're not even the same houses. If you, if you come into the neighborhood and you actually go to the Manor's collection and then come over to ours, you would see the difference. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, any comments from the board? Anybody familiar with this neighborhood? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, this is Wendell. I wanted to ask, uh, is, ask the um, property owners, this is the Lenar community and Fender Farms. You're on the left-hand side of Liesel Road or the right-hand side where the 35,000 square foot community complex was built about five years ago? No, we, we have no community complex built yet. It's, it's probably a year to two years away. But you are a, you are Lenar's product. Lenar is a builder on the farm. I'm very familiar with the neighborhood. And they- is Carolina Arbors and- Right. Right, Arbors. Carolina Arbors. That's the name I was looking for. There is a difference for what Lenar is doing, their base prices and the upgrade features. So I am familiar with that neighborhood. And there is there are, there are differences. Carolina Arbors is interior. Lenar's neighborhood is exterior and it will be building out to the north. So as far as there are distinct differences and that 35,000 square foot community center is for Carolina Arbors and that's Dale Webb. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So do you think we should make some adjustment on this then, so, Mr. Uh, uh, so I didn't use any comps in the Carolina Harbor neighbors because they are more, more expensive than this one. That's why what I use the same neighborhood, which is what is right. the R769D. And these okay. are all, all what in the you know Farmville. But when we right. take out the Carolina Arbus comps, they are very, very expensive. That's why more pricey. I didn't, right. yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Right. Right. So it, these houses, these comps are not, I mean, that far from, from the subject when I'm looking at it, it doesn't seem to be, is that totally different? I mean, I'm not as familiar as the neighbor. I, I mean, I know a neighborhood, but I'm probably not as familiar with, as you, Wendell, but we're looking at the distance between the subject property and where the comps are. Right. Yeah, and they've been, they've been having price increases out there, but again, it doesn't explain the large variation. It is tough because of what the builder is doing and pricing up, and then the homeowners who are in there two, a year or two years are getting that same rise up because, as Albert stated, the pricing is in line with what's taking place overall in the same neighborhood, okay. though comparable to Carolina Arbor. So he's, you're right. It's tough. It really is. Well, and I think if you look at the fact from what the homeowner is saying is that they're in the the top range of the neighborhood, they're in the middle range of the neighborhood. Right. I do right. think there needs to be an adjustment made for location or whatever. <clears throat> if we went out there to appraise one of those homes, we would not use, we would make adjustments and probably try not to even use those homes in that higher right. range right. neighborhood. Well, okay. that's what I that's what I want to hear. Because the amenities and how they how they class when they put the classification of the series, that's where the difference comes in. And so the subjectivity for us is how much more of a value proposition is one selection over another one. And genetic right, that's where the challenge comes in. Well, is it going to be a location adjustment due to the road or in, or is it going to be a quality adjustment based on the condition of a difference of condition? Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, what she's saying with the, you know, that's an inside interior lots, you know, I mean, location would certainly work. Mm -hmm. We just don't have enough information to know whether like is, are these two comps, did they have three car garages and they've only got a two car garage, you know, based on uh, the, then that much larger, they probably are. So, you know, I think it's whatever we as a board, I think we it's due an adjustment based on the these two comps, whether it be location or, I don't know, grade adjustment. You want to do a location there? Yeah. So all those garages are two, two, two you know, uh, they are all two car garages that two are cars. used. Okay. And then we use the neighborhood adjustment code, which pretty much, you know, um, which pretty much factors the land because, like I said, when we compare it to the Carolina Arbors, the prices of those houses as compared to this one are expensive. That's why I didn't use any, you know, like any as comps. 
Well, I'm just looking at the, the values, the land values, and they're right. all pretty much the same, even though right. the two of them are further back. So right. I, I think I would like to see us maybe change that land value. So Tim, if you could pull that up, please. But I also have a question about why, um, if you, because this is new construction, it seems like there was a lot of stuff being built right on that street, like at on the Leesville. same right. time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So I was just wondering, like right on Montague, and mm -hmm. it seems like you could have found even closer comps, and not had to make an adjustment, or you know what I mean. So this is in the Farmville. Uh, subdivision. So when you get in from Leesville, this is just the same subdivision, but they have the right part and then they have the left part. They are the mm -hmm. same, you know, like we're sold, you know, by the same builder. Right. They'll build around the same time. And the right hand side, they put the models on the right hand side when you come into Fendel Farm, the sales office and the models on the right hand side, then the mm -hmm. new pictures on the left going to the west and to the east and backing up to Leesville, like you said that is going to be consistent traffic because there's more development scheduled along Leesville into right. Wake County. So you're right, Tony. Sure. <clears throat> All right, well, look, uh, Tim, put in a 15% adjustment for the land on this one. So with the land adjustment, we do have a, um, you know, we do have, you know, a cap. Uh, sometimes we don't go past 90% okay. yet. Can I make, a, can I bring a point up please? Yes. Okay, at the end of Montague there, you can see there's a little stub. Um, yeah. We're um, in uh, negotiation right now. Apparently there's going to be another subdivision being put in there. Um, right. It's being run through the county right now and they wanna run a road, that to be the second road to come out of that particular development and we're kind of in a battle with it right now because they want to make it a full two-way street. And it's not, if it becomes that, it is, it's, it's not a double yellow line street. It's a narrow street. I don't see how there's going to be a lot of traffic be allowed in and out of there. So, and but. our values are <clears throat> all right, well, we, Okay, well, we're already considering your values. So, all right, we've reduced the land value by 15% uh, based on the fact that they back up to Leesville Road. Uh, are you all comfortable with that? Do you want to look into any sort of quality? I mean, it's, uh, Albert was saying that the ones he used were also two car garages. Those mm -hmm. were comparables he used. What is, but what, what, is, what, would, what would be, the, yeah, what would just that? What would, let, let us talk now, okay, please. No, I was going to ask you, Dave, with your adjustment, what, what, where does that bring the value to? It takes about $10,000 off again. It moves it down to four twenty. Oh, okay, four twenty. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> you are comfortable with that? You want to look at it some more? What's, what's I'm comfortable with that adjustment. I am too. I am too. Okay. All right, then I will uh, entertain a motion regarding this is number 234. A move that we uh, accept the adjusted value. Do I have a second? Second, Mrs. Window. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> Amount there, uh, Annette, it's a uh, uh, 423.72. And if we want to appeal this further, it's through the state? That's correct. You'll get information from the letter that you'll receive from the county. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Do we have uh, Gilbert Oakley? Is Gilbert Oakley present? All right. Well, let's. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, good. All right. Yes, sir. Let's get you sworn in, please. If you'll raise your right hand, you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. And are you comfortable with you <clears throat> as uh, for your hearing? Yes. And you are the owner of this property on Havenwood Lane. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, the county has a value of 536, been lowered to 523. You think it's worth 495.5. Is that correct? Uh, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, but our link just started breaking okay. up. It's been doing okay. fine for now. Your value, the you, value you, of the, you think the value of the property is four ninety five five. Four, well, I'm going to pay for it. What, what are you basing your value on? Uh, I looked at the square footage, uh, and, and uh, the county has already reduced the square footage uh, from my first appeal. 
uh, but I don't think it's enough. I have five comps in, uh, in our neighborhood of houses that are uh, just like mine with some minor, uh, I say minor, with some differences. Uh, the, there are two proper, two of these five properties have uh, sitting rooms, which adds additional heated square, uh, square footage. And two of them have fireplaces, and, and I don't. But uh, your, your records indicate that you have me as a no for, for fireplaces. So I think uh, where I'm at is the square footage. I've got two examples of the five that I can give you. Now you say square footage. Does the county have your square footage wrong? Is that what you're saying? That's what I think, yes. Okay, and you're basing your square footage on, on what? Well, two, two things. One is the uh, uh, EPCON, the builder, advertises the square footage as uh, 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 2,468. I'm currently at uh, 2,535 on your website, on the, the website. Uh, and of the five comps, they're all, all of those comps are, show a smaller square footage than mine. And two of them actually have uh, more, I know they have more heated space because they have sitting rooms. Okay. Well, let's, hear uh, from all the let's hear from the county about your square footage first. Let's work on that. Okay. Um, so Albert, you know, he was sworn under a previous case. That's why I'm not swearing him in. Uh, what, what's going on with the square footage on this one, Albert? So um, we looked at the square footage and we went into the LDO system. So the LDO system um, provided by the city gives us pretty much um, the square foot of what you, you know, like a builder has. Uh, normally when we do the measurement, we do the measurement from the outside. So normally if it's within a hundred square foot, most of the time, we are right because you know we measure from the outside. So uh, we did fix the square foot issue, which actually brought the value down to 523,409. And when you look at you know like the comes in the neighborhood, um, everything is in line in terms of the year, the description, the grade, the depreciation. Well, when you know, look at, let's, let's deal with the square footage first. So, uh -huh. so you think the square footage of this property is what is is 2658 and uh mr oakley you think it's two what do you think it is 2000 uh, and one of the comps shows it that it's a house exactly like mine shows 2307 2307 yes sir so but you said that there was your you had plans from when you bought it that showed 2500 and something well it's their advertised uh uh, square footage. When you look at the various models, when we bought, there were three models in this neighborhood. We bought the middle knot model and it was advertised as 2,468 square foot. foot. Okay. And, and so Albert, what system did you say you used to get the square footage? We use the LDO system. So this is actually the plan that the builders provide to the city. So this is an accurate, you know, like square foot. All right. What, yeah. What you use the, the square footage. Well, both of you sound like you use square footage from the builder and the, and the square footages are different. Yeah. Uh, can, could I tell you one thing uh, about these five comps that I have? Okay. They all are listed, that all their square footage is listed lower than mine as much as 228 square feet less. Okay. And they're all there. Well, we, we just want to make sure that we've got the facts correct. We want to make sure we have the square footage correct. And then we can start talking about the, the comparables that were used. So, you know, it looks like we have a, a one to 200 square foot discrepancy here, <clears> this property. So I'm wondering if we shouldn't maybe send somebody out to measure it by hand so we got the right square footage. Um, but uh, Albert, were you aware of, of the square footage indication that he had from, from the builder? Correct. Uh, that's why we went to the LDO to um, make amends. To well, the, L, the LDO, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what that is. Is that something all builders supply to you? What What is it? Yeah, I think it's something the builder supplies to the city, you know, and it's for permit, you know, reason. Um, so most of the new houses now, they do send, you know, um, the square foot of every building, you know, like to the city. So 
we have access to it. So that's and because of the COVID, we were not going out. So we were using those tools to, you know, uh, rectify most of the square foot issue. So it's probably a building. The, the builders, the builders submit their building plans to the city. LDO is just a term we use to uh, to identify it. So it is where the building permits are stored from the builders. Okay. So it is actually the square footage that the builder supplies to the city when they're getting it approved for construction. Yes, the complete set of plans. Okay. All right. Okay, well, let's move on then. So, uh, now, Mr. Oakley, you supplied some comparable sales. Is that correct? Are these the ones? Uh, that are yeah, I have uh, five comps in the neighborhood that are uh, the same model as mine. And I mean, that, same model, meaning they're same size. So, is that what we're looking at right here? Are these, uh, Tim, are these his comps or are these? Uh, comps? No, sir. I, I didn't provide anything, I didn't know I could. Oh, you didn't provide any comparables? No, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so, so uh, I, you know, we, we don't really have any 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 evidence from you then, other than just your testimony. Well, I can tell you that 1005 Vesper Court, that's the third from the left in this uh, left-hand picture, uh, is, a, uh, is the same model as mine. It's on my list of comps. And it's at 23, 2,346 square feet. Uh, I can't really read this. Yeah, it looks like the same square footage. That's 189 square feet less than mine. But uh, your land is uh, actually bigger than that. And that accounts for two. So we have something called schedules of value. Just like when you were saying, you know, the fireplace, you know, we take every component of the house and sometimes it might be the same square foot, but there may be certain things that pretty much, you know, will affect your value and your value might look more than that. Some people might have a screen porch and you might have just an open porch. And just like your land, you have a 0.17 land and then, you know, the comes has point, you know, 14. So schedules of value pretty much helps us to put a price, you know, on pretty much each component of the property. Okay. Yeah. Well, then in that in that light, uh, 1005 Vesper Court, the one, the one we're just talking about, uh, 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 overlooks a, uh, a water view. So I, I know that Epcon considers theirs worth more than mine. I back up to a rental property. Okay. All right. Well, let, let's move on with this. What's uh, what's the opinion of the board? On this hey, there's a question, right? Okay, was there ever appraisal done on the house? No. Uh, is yes, that sir. question? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, well, no. Uh, the figure we're looking at, the 459,000 uh, uh, cost of the house, that's EPCON's cost. He's asking. No, I'm just asking. Oh, question. I'm Okay, so well, because sometimes, sometimes if you get a loan on it, you get you have to have an appraisal done. I can pay cash. You don't have to have one done. Oh, I, I, I don't. Uh, I don't have a mortgage, so okay. we didn't have to have an appraisal for that. No. <clears throat> any other comments from the board, or any other questions? What's the pleasure of the board for this property? I got a question. Let me just ask this right here. I'm just recap, make sure I understand. They the, the, the county used 2658 as a heated square feet. Right. It was that was the initial show, um square foot, but we've made adjustment to it to 50. Uh to 2535. Yeah, 25. And and that's what brought the value down to. 523 409. And the homeowner, so when you look at it, square, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. and so yeah. the homeowner saying it's not that big, it's, it's 23. Am I correct? I mean, I can go over there and measure it, you know. No, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, David, yeah. we started out with everybody agreeing, uh, gr trying, trying to sign the, the science of it. And, and the homeowner said he got his 
He got his figure from the builder and advertising. You got your figure from the builder, but you know, I think that's the starting point there. I don't know. Well, do you think we need to send him out to have him measure it and make sure we got the right square footage? Well, I thought I thought that's what we would do if there was a square footage issue. Um, right. Okay. Well, let's do that then. Let's let's continue this until the until they go out and uh, and measure it. Is it all right with you, Albert, to go measure? Sure. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. I'll right. call Mr. Uh, Oakley and then make an appointment. Okay. All right. That'd uh, be great. All right. Motion to continue. You. Yeah. Well, I need a motion to continue this. So move. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. All opposed? Carries. Okay. I know we're running behind, but let's take a five minute break. I need to oh, yeah. Thank you, Dave. wander up a little bit. <laughs> Clear my head. Oh. <laughs> five minutes, though. Let's come back quickly because we got a little. Question for Albert. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, you, uh, you'll let, you'll uh, let me know when you're coming out. Yeah, I'll call you so that I'll schedule an appointment with you. Because of the COVID, oh. I pretty much have to uh, schedule oh. an appointment and then you oh. know, we still maintain. Oh. That's it. Done, we know for sure. All right. So I'll definitely okay. call you tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Okay, Travis, wake up there. You're looking like yeah. <laughs> looking like you're not interested. <laughs> hey, man, I only got one more left. What you talking about? <laughs> so you're interested in? <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> okay, you were sitting there looking so serious faced. Yeah, you had your game face on. <laughs> hey, I'm ready. All right, man. All right. <laughs>
Hey, Tony. When do you, when is um when they're supposed to start building going down Leesville Road between Fender Farms and Carolina Arbors? You know, behind the when you come in to the right, there's the model homes. There was a stub out road that stopped there. So they're gonna be connected to the open land that was beside there behind the model homes. That was my understanding. Um, okay, but I haven't heard so. anything about timing. Yeah, yeah, I just wonder. It's just TBD. Right. Is Durham County still providing the, is Durham County providing the um along the Leesville Road, is Durham County providing water and sewer, but Raleigh is getting is Raleigh taxes, but Durham water and sewer? I don't know that. I, don't know I hadn't far. heard anything about like annexes or anything, but I don't know. Okay. I remember when Carolina, Carolina Arbors went to the county years ago before they first built that, the Dale Webb, and there right. was an issue where they wanted Durham's mm -hmm. sewer, but Wake County's taxes. It's been some years ago, though. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Wendell, are you going to be here Thursday? Yeah, our hearing got settled. So, you yeah. know, I need to talk to you, give you a call about something. <laughs> 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 yeah, same, something scheduled at the same time, right? Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do but one Zoom meeting at a time. <laughs> I know, right? I'm not, I don't know how to do both of them. I know people can do both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even attempting it. <laughs> I told Sheila if I got done early, I would zoom in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, let, let's get going. Looks like we have every, everybody back. Next, I see Hugo Villagra. Is that correct? Is he present? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Uh, I hear you, yes. Okay, let me uh, turn on the video real quick, sir. Okay. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine, sir. Can you see me? Yes, we can see you and okay. hear you. Thank you very much. All right, let's get you sworn in, please, if you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. And um, are you okay with using this Zoom format for your appeal? Yes, I am, sir. And um, you are the owner of this property on Sundial Circle, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, you know the uh, county has valued your property around one hundred thirty-six thousand. You think it's worth eighty-six thousand, correct? Correct. And what are you basing your eighty-six thousand dollar value on? I'm basing it on uh, comparable sales that I submitted to my appeals to a comparable property on the exact street that the county uh, omitted from its valuation. Uh, the the paperwork that I submitted was for a comparable property. Let me pull it up so I can show. Uh, based on uh, a, a comparable of. On 2508 Sundial Circle, that property is comparable to mine in that it was built in, uh, you know, in 1990, while mine was built in 1994. And this property, sir, sold on December 7th, 2018 for 87000 Moreover, the subject property, my property, sold on February of 2019. And I know that's outside the scope, but it shows a trend line, sir. And I got that same property, my property sold on February 15th, 2019 for 86,000. Now, and that's on the exact same street, a sale of my very own property. So I am having a, a tough time swallowing the county's valuation <clears throat> at 136,807. Uh, you know, it seems to me that it's that the valuation is excessive, and you know I don't know what what comparables the county uh, used to come out to that value when in 2019 on that same street the valuation and the actual sales price of my own property shows that the trend line 
was not near 100. It's almost appraised at twice the value of recent sales back then as of, as of January 2019. And, you know, negotiations with the mm -hmm. county, and I see the lady right there that I spoke on the phone uh, with, uh, you know, it, it went nowhere. So my, my uh, whole basis for this appeal, that is that the county excluded the data, number one, from my own property and comparable sales to arrive at a value, which is almost twice the value that somebody paid for the very same property in 2019 and 2018. Now, you know. So what's the square footage of your property? My square footage, sir, is 12. Um, let me look at the at the appeal here. My, the, uh, my, my uh, uh, mine is 1292 where the comparable of, of 2508 on the very same street is only a hundred square foot bigger. And it was built in 1990. Well, mine was built in 1994. You go from 2412, which is my property, 2508, uh, which is, you know, sold uh, for uh, 87,000 on 1217. And then you got my own property sold on February 15, 2019 for 86,000, sir. So, Again, I'm at a loss how they arrived at 130, at almost 137,000 when my understanding is what the property was worth as of January 1st, 2019. I don't recall seeing uh, what comparables, um, and we're gonna get into that when the county does its side, but where, where did they get that value of 137,000? I'm using, I'm using uh, sir, actual sales figures for property. This is okay, not let's let's ask the county and see what yes they, yes what please came up with okay all right uh, Miss Smith are you available yes okay if you'll raise your right hand please do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth will help you God yes state your name and position with the county please Robin Smith Durham County uh, Real Property Appraiser all right and you heard his concerns and questions if you could maybe help us. Okay, sure. Especially with the comparable that he provided. Okay. Well, first of all, the, the original value is 136807 And the owner, the taxpayer owner uh, opinion of value is $86,000. He's using the uh, sale uh, dated uh, as of February 15, 2019. Uh, but this house was flipped. So he bought it. Uh, on June, uh, he bought it June 2019, four months later, for $177,000. And the comps that I'm gonna, that I used to, uh, that I considered uh, for this appraiser, uh, comps, they're, they're comparable as far as, uh, uh, they're similar in style, style grade, uh, it's, the cops are slightly bigger, but not that much. And the values are in line with the, the, the uh, sales. So uh, we recommend that the board uphold the county's tax value of 136807 Tim, can wow. we see his, uh, uh, his comparable again, please? Can I say one more thing I forgot? Uh, he's that? using a two-story. The, the comp that he used is a two-story. We... Uh, his house is a ranch style, so I use all ranch style houses. And I, I can't see on here how how big. How, what's the square footage of this twenty five oh eight sundial court? It's 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 about third. It's, it's under slightly under fourteen hundred square feet. So let me give you the exact uh, square footage on that prop. That one is fourteen oh four, sir. The twenty five oh eight. Okay. All right. Thank and you. also, sir, uh, again. Uh, you know, she's using, you know, okay, you know, my, my point and, and also what she's saying is that there's a, there was a relative lack of comparable sales. She's using property that's like two miles away. She's using a house. I think her comp number three has a garage. My, my, my house does not have a garage. So, you know, uh, and that shows uh, what I'm trying to prove to the, to the board that, there's very few comparable, but I'm using the actual sale of, I understand her argument, but what I'm trying to show the board is the trend line at that time in January, 2019, the trend line 
was, and I gave you a count from that, I understand, because that's the only one available. And on my exact street, now granted, because there's no exact size house, that's what I had to go by. And you know, the statute requires the appraisals to use comparable size, comparable age, grade, et cetera. And my argument is it's only a hundred square foot difference. I understand it's a two story house, but again, you know, well, I'm, I'm looking at her at her comparables. I guess that you can see that screen too. And yes, sir. Like two of them are right on top of your house, and they're all ranch houses, and they're all very close in age and size. Well, sir, but again, you know, that's that's not on my exact street. That's like three miles, three miles, two miles away. And uh, again, you know, no, sir, even even four, even even four hundred and nine hundred feet away. <laughs> oh, well, I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at, uh, oh, where's it say? Oh, See two miles, line? 900. So, but again, 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 though, even the comparable doesn't show that, you know, 136,000 when my unit itself on February 2019 sold for 87,000. And of course she is, uh, you know, the board doesn't seem to want to take into consideration that the trend line, how do you go from 86, 87? You know, I, I'm not the one who flipped it. That must have been the previous owner before me, but I'm going by sale at, as of 2019. And I think it's clearly, uh, the, the appraisal value come at is, is clearly excessive, gentlemen and ladies. Tim, can, can you scroll up a little bit so we can see the bottom there? Okay. I was trying to get a square foot value on here. I'm not seeing one. Which one? Thing? I, I mean, I was looking for a, a per square foot value for the for the comparables. Oh, yeah, there, there. Is that what that SPP square foot is? Right. Okay. Yeah, SPP SF. It's right under the mm -hmm. uh, enclosed porch. Mm -hmm. It have like a hundred square feet. Right. Okay. I was used to being further down. Okay, I got it. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, board. Uh, what are your, your comments and questions on this property? Mr. Chair, this is Wendell. Yes. Know the area. Roberts built properties late 80s, late, late, late 80s, early 90s, three, one and a half, three bedrooms, 1.5 baths, or three and twos, only three to four different models of built. It's sundial off of Dearborn. Subject property comps are within one to two miles of the subject area. Clifford is Milan Woods. I know this area well. Ryan Court Sundial, the same area. Investors have been acquiring property over the last several years, renovating and flipping them at the 160s to 170s. So the values put up by the county are in line with the neighborhood there. And for the subject property owner, we know who built these properties, what they mm -hmm. sold for in 1993. And at, if you take the subject properties, contestation of value, that means a 1,292 square foot property is not selling for $45 a square foot. That's what the argument would be if you take the dirt value out of $27,672. 27, so that value cannot be supported based on the market, as market trends in the neighborhood. The trends are up in the neighborhood, not down. Mm -hmm. If I may, though, and even looking at your square footage, it, it shows that it's it, minus a 137. The other one's in uh, about the $100 uh, a range. So even my pro even if we go by uh, by the county's determination, mine is on the high end. When I gave you data that the previous comparable that I used, 2508, you know, still out of line, 137 to 108, 97, and 122. And, and I showed, and I showed, and I and I showed the county, the, the the comparable sale that it ignored deliberately to to come up with these figures. Okay. so again, I think they need to do some sort of adjustment on the on the even just looking at that square footage is out of line. It's almost by a third, almost forty percent. Okay, uh, all right, sir, we we got your point. So, uh, are there any other comments from the board? I make a motion to set county's values are presented. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our, our end comps too, it's in line. So I would agree and second that. Okay, any other discussion? Then uh, all those in favor of the county, accepting the county's values, say aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed? All right, sir, you know, we, we agree with the county. If you want to appeal this to the state, you'll get the information from the county with a letter, all right? All right. Okay, thank you.
All right, let's move along to, is it Wenji Sun? Is that correct? You'll need to be uh, unmuted. Sir, uh, can you can you unmute yourself, please? If you look up in the top right corner, there, are, there should be a little blue. There you, there you are. Thank you, sir. That's like you. Okay, so uh, is that how you pronounce your name? Wenju Sun? I don't want to. Yes, very good. That's, that's correct. And uh, you own this property on Swift Creek Crossing, is that correct? Correct. And you are okay with using this format, this Zoom format for your appeal? Yes. All right. Well, let's get you sworn in. If you will raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. Okay. State your name, please. My name? Yes. When's the sun? Okay. All right. And uh, you understand the county has valued your property around $520,000. You think it's worth $495,000. Is that correct? Right. And what are you basing your value on? How yeah. are you how are you valuing your property at 495? I compare my house with another three house in the same neighborhood community. They are built around the same time, about the same square footage, and about the same sale price. And my my uh, appraisal value is two, two or two, three, so twenty thousand dollars more than others. Looks like uh, it's a uh, higher than it should be. Look, uh, so when is the sale price five hundred twenty-six thousand dollars? Another one is five hundred twenty. Another is five hundred. The sales of the time is about the same. Uh, all are new, new built homes. My house is a new home. And uh, it should be the same square footage you can see. Mine is 3,200 something. The other one is 3,131. The other one is 3,035. The other one is 3,168. So all about the same. So why why my my appraisal value is a uh, is a uh, two to three thousand dollars no two twenty to thirty thousand dollars more. Okay, that's, the, that's why what I what I appealing. Okay, all right. Well, let's uh, we'll ask the uh, the appraiser in the county why that that is the case. It's a uh, Tra Travis has already been sworn in from a previous case. Okay, Fraser. Uh, yes, um, this home, this home was purchased in 2017, um, and the home was purchased for five hundred and sixteen thousand and five hundred dollars, uh, which is about two years off uh, of what we currently have now at five hundred and twenty thousand. Um, which I tried to explain to the homeowner about this um, and the difference. Um, and the comps that we have um, all justify on that $520,000 um, current tax value. Um, and the only, I would use um, the comp uh, one uh, from the homeowner and comp three, um, but I could not use uh, comp two um, to justify any price because it's a ranch style home. Um, and this would go more with a uh, Cape Cod or conventional style. All right. Okay. Any any questions from the board? Uh, sorry, can I say something? Yes, sir. The gentleman, gentleman is a Thomas, right? He said the uh, ranch is uh, more expensive than Keep a well, ranch is it's a different sort of uh it's hard to compare a ranch with a two-story house or a cape cod house because they're but he said uh, it's more expensive usually yeah a ranch is more expensive per square foot they're more expensive not overall see my one is a uh, cape cod right the other, the other 
homes. One is rich, actually. Right? And these, these are all yeah. Yeah. Cape Cods we're looking at here. If I was to use the ranch style home, the square footage would actually be about ten dollars more. It would be more expensive. And it looks like that we're within is this did you do a percentage on this one by any chance, Travis? It's within five percent. Yeah, it's within okay. All right, because it's very close. The values are very close. All right, what's what's the pleasure of the board regarding this property? I'm, I'm favoring the uh, county. Me okay. too. I think the comps are good. Okay. The comps. All right, then I'll entertain a motion regarding 237. A mode that we uphold the county value. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, uh, Mr. Sun, we're going to go along with the county's value. We feel like the comparables that he used are good and it's very close to the value that you think it is. If you're not happy, you can appeal this to the state and you will get a letter that tells you how to do that. Okay. okay. I have another existing uh, issues. Can I bring it up here? Issue about a different property? No, the same property, but this is a 2019 tax. Right. On the two, the I, haven't, I, I appealed, but the uh, never has been uh, resolved because of the pandemic. Can I bring it, bring it up here? Or I, I think you should call and bring that up with the staff people. Uh, if you call them and bring it up with them. Okay. Because we're, we're dealing just with this, this particular value right here today. Okay? okay. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's move on to the next case. <laughs> Net Pridgen, uh, number 238 has uh, asked to be rescheduled. 238, oh, that's correct. Okay, what about uh, Kathy Hayes? Is Kathy Hayes uh, available? Is she here? Kathy Hayes, okay. Uh, where with is, well, is Jamin, is he back? Apparently he's the one that's handling this one. I think it's me. Actually, I'm I'm not sure. understand is it me. you? Maybe yeah. it's me. Is it parcel 134233? Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's me. Okay. It's Jeff. me. All right. Yeah. So, um, anything from, from Ms. Hayes? Oh. Albert, have you heard anything from her or had any contact? No. Yeah. no. I spoke with her early on um, in the year when I was doing their appeals. Okay. Uh, she had a reason with our value because the bank called her to tell her the value has increased. And I think it was um, it was due to the 2019 general reappraisal uh, when we did it. And I explained to her um, the reason why, you know, our value is right, because um, I put up some comps in the neighborhood, which pretty much reflect our value. Um, if Tim is around, Tim can pull up the comps for 134233. But her reason was, uh, she had a call from the bank, you know, that her value is up. And the reason why it's up because of our 2019 January appraisal. And there are sales in the neighborhood that supports uh, our value. Uh, we have, um, we have, um, we have these comps. Um, and if you look at, you know, the style, the grading and everything, some of them are good. But when you look at So has is 1995. The other ones are just a year off or below. Um, the same neighborhood, mm, they're very close. So I think um, our value is in line and I do recommend the board to uphold our value. Okay, any questions from the board? Any discussion? And I'll entertain a motion regarding number 239. I move we uphold the county's value. Do I have a second? I second, Wendell. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so I think that's everything, isn't it? Thank All you. right. Uh, any, anything else from uh, Sterling? You got anything else? Uh, yes, I do. 
uh, on the previous case with the uh, the uh, prior to Mr. Young son, uh, uh, we're going to revisit his property because a building permit was taken out in 19 to do that flip with. Uh, his property has a building permit for renovation on the house complete after the $60,000 sale that he's talking about. Uh, or no, 80,000. I think it was 80,000 or was it 62? Whatever it is. So 86, I think. 86,000, right. Uh, that was the investor purchasing it. They took out the permits, remodeled the house completely, heat and air, vinyl side, added new siding, uh, did a complete, uh, did floors, added bamboo floors and all that stuff. And what he failed to understand is that even if we had made an adjustment on it, for some arbitrary reason, we're going to increase it again because we've got the building permits on it now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the same investors on that same neighborhood also doing these same locations. You can tell by the red door. <laughs> same investor group that's buying mm -hmm. and renovating them and doing them in these neighborhoods. These are Roberts built properties in the late 90s, or late 80s, early 90s. He only had five styles and he paid 83000 for it in 1991. So David, what you're seeing now is their investors are getting them at 1,200, 1,300 square feet. They're able to flip them and get a higher value, but they're bringing new housing stock on the market. So that's what they're up against right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what, one other thing, Sterling, uh, we need to work on the timing because uh, we've got three cases in 15 minutes. You know, that that's really kind of pushing it. And yeah. I hate to, be, hate to be so far behind. Yeah, uh, we're going to, I looked at that and I noticed that myself on this. And so uh, we're going to try to do something a little bit. See, the cons the consent agenda goes so quickly uh, to put us ahead. But then when we put three in the same 15 slot, that ends up, we end up behind at the end. So we got to do a little bit more balancing here to try to make the uh, schedule fit uh, more equitably versus the consent versus the actual hearings. So uh, I think we need to do, uh, just as you said, uh, do looking at some of them and spreading them out a little bit more, maybe even in between, uh, let's say that if we do three cases and then have a break, three cases, have a break so they can get back on schedule, you mm -hmm. know, uh, out of the- uh, That would be good. We could Then we could work through the break if we have to. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Time it so we have a break then if we don't need the break, so it'll keep us up. Right, yeah. right. And you know, like you said, you know, we had that, that big gap at the beginning where, you know, we finished the consent agenda and then we had to, uh, you know, had to wait for the untimely. 30 minutes just to come back into the meeting. So uh, learning experience for us as well. So uh, we're going to look at that and we'll see. Uh, we'll ju start judging the consent agenda a little better. And then those first, that 11 o'clock meeting, could have probably been earlier, so right, right. Mm -hmm. So that would would end uh, if we had the same amount of time. That would have ended us probably at uh, uh, twenty five. Well, the, the amount of time we went to break, so it would have put us right at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, you don't like it, making these people wait more than about thirty minutes if we can help it. I got you. I feel the same way. Okay, yeah. all right. Good. And we're not we're not meeting Thursday, correct? But it's next Tuesday. That's right. Anybody have anything Alrighty. else? Uh, well, I'll send an email, but Tuesday I, I have a one thirty obligation that I that I that I can't get out of on Tuesday. I mean I'll be here, but look like the, we, we finished up at one twenty six today, but I definitely have to leave uh probably about one about one twenty five uh uh Tuesday. Okay. Uh we'll we'll take that into consideration and we'll try to rush that. Early stuff along. Well, you don't have to rush. I'm just letting you know you probably. No, I didn't mean it bad. I did not mean it. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> I meant it good. <laughs> Tony and Wendell, you can you stay? You're not going. You don't have anything that makes you leave early, do you? No, I'm good. I'm good. So as long as you have quorum, we have yeah, yeah. I'll just I'll just give you a heads up. That's all. Just that that particular day. That's all. That's good. All right. All right. Okay, thank you, everybody. Have a Good great, see everybody. great evening. Thank you. Great seeing you, board members. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 <laughs>